after a week two win on the road. The Red Devils are off to their best start since 2019, and they look to continue that trend as they open their NACC slate against the one and one Rockford Regents. I'm Spencer Davis, joined as always by Levi Taylor. And Levi, we are just time, about to reach the national anthem. We'll be on the other side of it with some pregame analysis, and we are looking forward to bringing this one to you. Yeah, we're looking we're, we're looking forward to week two. This is the first conference game of the year, and. Uh, you know, looking to see what Eureka can come out and do. This is an opportunity to do something that they haven't done since 2018, and that's be 3 and 0. Uh, and they're going to have to come together and play as a team today. They're shorthanded in some areas due to injuries and other circumstances, but I think they can come out today and play a good, complete game against this Rockford team. Yeah, this the last win that they had on the road was against Greenville, as you said, 23-14 uh, win. It was a really gritty win. Um, for the Red Devils, again, not a lot of offense was clicking, per se. Uh, Angel Garcia went down with an injury. He's out uh, in today's game. So it's going to be the freshman, Jacoby Deloche, getting a lot of touches. Yeah, and another thing that Barth talked about in that Greenville game is their defense played just good enough for them to win the game. Their offense isn't putting up huge numbers so far this year, but their defense has played so well. I mean, their defense only gave up seven points last week. The other seven were off of a kick return that went to the end zone. So only giving up seven points on the defensive side of the ball, I mean, you're going to win a lot of games doing that, Spencer. And then, Levi, the Rockford Regents coming into this one, 1-1, one one, they dropped their week one matchup, but week two, a little bit more success. Week two, they were down with a minute 43 to go, started on their own about 30-yard line, drove the length of the field, tied it up, and went for two to get the win. A gutsy call by their coach, something that you don't really see, going for two for the win. And Levi, I don't want to correct you on that. They were down they one. They were down one, correct. My mistake. Yeah, My mistake. but like, you know, passing up the opportunity to go into overtime and we're like, you know what, we're going to we're gonna win this in regulation here. It worked out for the best. Levi, tell me about the quarterback that Rockford's got. He's the guy that really jumps out on the stat sheet. Well, what we're going to see from Jalen Ray today, quarterback of the Rockford Regents, they like to throw it a lot. And in the loss that they had in week one, he only threw for 284 yards, only completing 58% of his passes. But in the win, we saw that he was completing 70% of his passes and threw for about 443 yards and three touchdowns. So when he is on, they have a good chance to win the game. And if he's not on, you know, they're not going to be their, – their game is throwing the ball. they got to throw the ball to be successful. Levi, does he have a specific guy that he's looking at a lot of times when he's driving back, or does he like to share the sugar? He likes to share the sugar, Spencer. He's got three different guys that he likes to go to. He likes to go to his tight end, Curtis Jose. He's got 15 receptions for over 200 yards on the season. He's his main guy that he likes to go to. But the other two receivers behind him are do having a really good year to start as well. Uh, we've got Daquan McIntosh, number two wide receiver. He's got 10 receptions, 154 yards, and a touchdown. Maurice Williams, number 10. He's got nine receptions, 150 yards, and a touchdown. Those are his three main guys that you're going to see go to. And then also we've got the running back, Jack Carey, who also is having a good year. So we're looking at a high-powered offense with a lot of explosiveness that can put points on the board. Yeah, but the big thing I would say, Levi, defense has been the concern for Rockford. They've given up 34 points and 37 points. So it's really going to be up to this Eureka offense, I think, to maintain pace with this Def or the, uh, the Rockford offense. Right. So, like I said, Barth is saying we're not seeing a lot of explosiveness out of this offense. Where they're putting up points, they're not playing bad. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to make it sound like they're playing bad. But they're not putting a ton of points on the board. And something that Coach Barth said this week is he feels like his quarterback, Caden Frazier, is one step away from taking it to the next level and being a problem for a lot of teams. He's playing well right now. He's not playing bad football. But he said he feels like he is just one step away from being being a real issue, so we can see some great things out of Caden Frazier in this game today. Levi, who do you have for X factors in this game? Well, for us on offensive side of the ball, with Jack being out, we're going to be looking to the freshman a lot, Jacoby Deloche, to, to carry the ball a lot. And of course, mixed in with that, we're going to see a lot of Ben Burnaby today. And then, as always, our athlete, Sebastian Hill. He's going to be a problem on the field. He's a problem for everybody that he goes up against. And, uh, you know, Caden's. Obviously going to be looking at him, but we've got other weapons. We've got Jack Butler out there. We've got uh, Alex Glover out there. Austin Swike we've got out there. We've got weapons that we can put points on the board. But uh, like I said, Sebastian Hill is a guy to look out for. Yeah, he's got four touchdowns already on the year. I believe he is tied now uh, for fifth place in receiving touchdowns, and he's already moving up in the receiving yards. Only a junior, a lot to look forward to. Defensively, do you have anybody you have your eye on? <laughs> Defensively, Spencer, there's a lot of guys I can talk about. We've got Brendan Durr. 
NAC Player of the Week last week on the defensive side of the football. He had uh, 13 tackles, I believe, last game. Yeah. That puts him up to 21 on the season, and he's got four tackles for loss. Another guy that we can look at is Hanson Johnson. He's got 15 tackles on the year, and as a freshman, he's got three tackles for loss so far in the first two games. Lot to look forward to. We're looking forward to bringing it to you. We've got the team standing out. A little bit of spitfire coming from the ceiling. The proverbial ceiling, that is. And uh, we're looking forward to bringing this one to you. Rivalry, as always. Eureka took the last matchup here last year. I believe it was a 31-14 victory. And they're looking to repeat that success. Levi, possible 3-0 start. First time since 2018. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge for a lot of these guys. Because, I mean, if you think about it, it's 2023 now. If there are any guys that were on that team, it's very few. So this is something that a lot of these guys have never had the opportunity to do since they've been here. And especially, you know, the young guys might not understand it as much. For these older guys, this is very important to get this season off to a 3-0 start. Rockford to kick off. Eureka to start with the Rock. Finistad booms it deep. And it is going to be... It looks like we've got somebody new returning the ball here. He's got a good return going so far. Able to shake a man. Stops, gets pushed forward. And taken down near the 38-yard line. On the return, looks number like 10, Maceo Bill Williams. Nelson, the senior out of Port Freshman Oregon. out of Miami, Florida. Spencer, he had a great return there. We're going to start with good field position. And with the rain being First a factor here, you know, we might not see Eureka throw the ball a lot. They like to run the ball. They're going to come out and establish the run, I think. Yeah, and I mean the other thing is it's not raining too too hard. It's just a, a mild sprinkle, I would say, but it is supposed to continue throughout the game, I would say. It looks like it's supposed to die off closer to 3 o'clock, so maybe we see a little bit more passing in terms of that uh, later on. But right now, Eureka offense, like Levi said, likely going to run the ball heavily. Caden Frazier flanked by Burnaby and Deloche. It's Jack Butler in motion. Frazier going to drop back pass on the first play. Airs it out near the sideline. It's Hill and over Hill's head. We well, Spencer, I think they heard me. They said, yeah, right. We're not coming out and run the ball. We're going to throw it. Big shot on that first play. Uh, just not a catchable ball there. And uh, second and ten, we'll see what they got coming up here. So a big opportunity for Jacoby Delo. She got a lot of touches in week one, even more touches in week two. No Angel Garcia today. So what? what is a rookie, or not necessarily a rookie, but a freshman running back – how is that game speed different? I mean, you're you're talking from going to from a high school level to a college level where you're playing against guys that are older than you, guys that were dogs on their high school team. Uh, it's going to be challenging for the freshman here. See what he does here as he takes it up the middle. That's going to be a good gain there for about five or six yards. They're going to keep on him up and carry. looks Zero like about a gain of five or six yards, Spencer, goal. by the freshman. That's a good that's a good carry there on second down. Get him to a third and manageable. Yeah, and that's the big thing we always talk about. You want to get to that third and four. If you can get anywhere from third and two, obviously you want to get a first down. But, like, of course, you get to that third and inches to anywhere to third and five. You're in that nice spot where a lot of your playbook is open. The defense has to kind of worry about anything. First drive of the game, it's a third and four. First opportunity with a little bit of pressure on Caden Frazier. And the Red Devil offense is Burnaby in the backfield. Four receivers out wide. Frazier waiting for the snap. Going to drop back, looking to throw. He's going to air it out. Again, this is for Hill. Hill looking to beat his man, coming back for it. It looked like contact was we early. It was. Pass. Wow, that's. Uh, well, Spencer, I definitely <laughs> thought that was pass interference there. Ball was just a, a touch underthrown. Seabass had to come back for it. And I really thought that we had some contact there on the defensive side of the ball, but no flag, fourth down, got to punt it away. I mean, we always see that, and kind of, it's kind of a trap play, honestly, Number for the D-back. There's nothing you can do, but it is, it, you know, it usually is a flag. By rule, <laughs> by rule, I think it is a pass interference, you know, and I think it should have been called there, but, you know, unfortunately, it'll be a three and out, and Eureka will have to punt it away, and this will go out of bounds at about the 29-yard line, where we'll see this Rockford offense start to set up. Yeah, we got Jalen Ray coming out of the field, 6'2", 220, big guy. We'll see what they got cooking. They like to air it out coming off of a really good game, but like you said, rain maybe. We'll see if it affects uh, their game plan. They got a good running back with Jack Carey, though. Yeah, I highly doubt that this rain is going to scare them away from throwing the football. I mean, we saw Eureka well, throw it two times there on their first drive, so I highly doubt that we're going to see them not throw the football. I mean, that's what they like to do. That's their bread and butter. And I, <laughs> I would not be surprised to see them come out throwing right here. 
Ray already motioning his guy out. Key out wide. He's got another man in motion. Just like McIntosh, two out wide. Nobody playing deep. Red Devils showing blitz. Ray's going to hand off. It's Carey looking to bounce it outside. Wrapped up in the backfield. Looks like a gain of nothing. Jack well, Spencer, Carey. maybe I should stop trying to predict plays because I am now 0 for 2. <laughs> but uh, great, great push by the defensive line of, the, of Eureka there. And, yeah, as you were saying, nobody deep. They really like to play their linebackers about three or four yards behind their defensive line. And then their safeties are another three yards behind them. They play really tight, really close football. Yeah, they're really kind of daring Ray to go deep. Two tight ends in motion. Rockford likes to run a lot of two tight end sets. You don't see that too much. It's going to be Ray in the pistol. Once again, bad snap all on the ground, and Ray's just going to cover it up. We've got a fumble and a third on and long coming well, up for the Red Devil defense. Fortunate for the one, Eureka the defense right there. Is loss of yards on the play just It'll from a bad snap. And now the they've got third and long and a potential and to get their offense back on the field 12. and see what they can do. Now we'll see if there's a safety back now because you know Jalen Ray is uh, – Probably foaming at the mouth, ready to launch one. We got a bunch four, five receivers out on the field. And one thing Coach Barth said this week is this offense will formation you to death. Ray dropping back, Hopkins providing pressure, and it's knocked down by Miller. We've flag comes in late. Flag on the play. There was a block. There were a few guys that got through there. Christine we had a Hopkins coming off the edge, and then Miller coming up the middle, and. Uh, Great job getting his hands up in the passing lane. They'd be able to knock that one down. We'll check the flag and see what's going on here. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 10. Lee from the free spot, automatic first down. So a defensive mistake there. And Spencer, the, the fans really don't like that after seeing a blown pass interference call on the last drive. Hometown is not going to like that officiating right there. It'll be first down. Yeah, and that first down on their own gives Rockford a break and a half, to say the line. least. Reset the chains, 15 free yards and a first down, and the defense looked fantastic. They've looked great. <laughs> Haven't they've, given up any yards. <laughs> they've looked great. Just got to limit the penalties, limit the mistakes. Got to play disciplined football on the defensive side. Two out wide, Ray in the backfield once again. Carry next to him. Ray looking to go deep down the field. Hopkins putting some pressure on. Puts a hit on, and that's Jose. Once again, you see Austin Hopkins getting some pressure on the quarterback, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's back there all game long. He is on so effective on the defensive 12, side of the ball, and that's two straight plays now where he's been back there putting pressure on. Not exactly an inexperienced line for Rockford. They've got three juniors and a sophomore and a freshman, but they are providing a lot of heat on that right side, which is where the youth is. Ray is going to be in the pistol once again, carry behind him. Receivers all the way outside of the numbers. Ray handing off to carry. He's going to keep it himself. Ray goes and gets about four yards. Little read option there. Read it pretty good, got a pretty good gain. And brought down by David Hill, basketball convert. Played a lot of guard for Coach Chip Wildey, but now playing defensive back for Coach Barth. Number five. Probably not, the, you don't see it as much in terms of uh, conversions. I mean, we see Jimmy Graham with like pass catching, but you usually don't see guys going into the backfield, or defensive backfield, that is. No, he's a really athletic guy, and, and We've got, got some movement on the line here. Looks like we're going to get a false start on the offense. But going back to David Hill, he's just an athletic guy. And, and Coach Barth was talking about him, talking about the addition and how, how nice it is to have him as an athletic guy in that defensive backfield uh, coming over this offseason. He was working with him last spring after the season was over, after the basketball season was over, and he's on the roster this year. Third and 11. Five wide receivers once again. 11 minutes left in the first quarter, just underway. First drive for Rockford. Here's Ray, once again, looking to go long. It's like he's eyeing Williams and just out of his reach. Well, that's one thing that Coach Barth highlighted this week was to make him throw it deep. He's really accurate in those short and medium type situations, but when he's got to throw it deep, Coach Barth said, you start to see his accuracy go away a little bit when he's got to go deep. Well, and like he said, every quarterback is usually like that. Rarely do you see a guy that's picture perfect on every ball that he throws, especially when you're airing it down. 
But if they can keep getting him in those third and long situations and making him throw deep, that's exactly what Coach Barth wants to see out of his Deloche defense. Deloche, the, the starting Red running back, also manning the punt return here. A lot of heat coming back. Finistad able to get it off. And ran into the kicker. We'll see if it's roughing. But a flag does come in. Ball will be downed on the 15 yards. It's a good punt from Finistad, but well, Spencer, that's just another mistake by this Eureka team. Those are two could be could be costly penalties. We'll see what they call it here. If it's roughing or if it's just running into the kicker. Yeah, that that makes this a big play here. If it's roughing, it's the 15 yards and a first down. If it's just running into, personal foul. It is roughing. Receiving team number 59. That'll be another first down that this Rockford will have. This Rockford offense will have due to a penalty. The Rockford offense has gained perhaps net yardage has to be close to one. Spencer, they've had I think, one positive play and they've had a couple of negative plays. Spencer, I think they might be close to the negative, if I'm being honest with you. But with penalties, two first downs. Now they're going to have the ball at close to, on the other side of midfield on the 48 yard well, line of Eureka. Line and you just Eureka can't Eureka give this opportunity, this offense, more region. opportunities to score the football. They had two chances that the Eureka offense could have been on the field already. And nullified by personal foul penalties, nonetheless. And that's something that Coach Barth really, uh, and all coaches tend not to like to see, is those bailout penalties. Ray in the backfield looking to do a bubble screen. It's behind his receiver. And did not get pulled down from behind. I'm The horse collar tackle is going to be the call, but once again, he did, the runner didn't go down from behind. Spencer, no, his hand was on the front part of his shoulder pad. I don't really know. I mean, I saw that from here. I'm not really sure how you can call that, but we're going to get a horse collar against uh, – they called it against number 11, but that's not who was on the tackle. And we're going to get, again, another chunk play by a penalty for this Rockford offense. Yeah, they call that on Chris Woods. But, again, Levi – at least the way that I have always understood the rule, the horse collar tackle, on you've got to have it inside of the pads, and the runner has to be pulled down with his head facing the turf. Well, you're exactly right. <laughs> that is the rule. But, unfortunately, <laughs> I guess that's what they thought happened there. So 45 yards been gained on personal fouls for Rockford. That's about all their offense is run. Screen pass, high pass, and into the middle Incomplete of the field. Pass. Well, that was a setup screen right there. That's, how, that's why Rockford. all those defensive linemen were – through at the beginning they were trying to set up a screen but got a bunch of pressure in his face and he wasn't able to see his his target Curtis Jose on the play in completion second down Levi that's two screen plays they run in a row that time for the tight end yeah that time well he's listed as a tight end but he's not exactly built like your traditional tight end he's very athletic he's almost like a receiver just lined up at the tight end position gets a lot of receptions as I highlighted in the pregame and you're going to see him touch the ball a lot today Second and ten after the incompletion. Man in motion's carry. And likely an illegal formation, I would imagine. Flags on the play. False start. Just a really sloppy first five start. minutes of this. Yeah, you don't like to see this many flags in the beginning of the, of the game. Uh, you know, you like to see the referees try to stay out of it as much as they can, but... Now on the with some some plays you have to call right right like a, some like a false start typically you want to call the false start as a Lions fan <laughs> 1031 second and 15 again there's been what six seven accepted penalties so far something like that Spencer there's been a lot of penalties a lot of stoppages in this Please game Got some 10 problems 31. with the game clock here. Got to get it reset before this play. I'll have to reset the game clock too. There it is. Or excuse me, the uh, play clock. See, it's it's odd because you, the shot clock in basketball gets called the game clock sometimes. It's it's confusing. It anyway. does get confusing <laughs> when you try to sw switch <laughs> over. Anyway, <laughs> ball at the 36-yard line for the Rockford Regents. Carry once again in motion. Ray dropping back to pass. Eureka looks to play it deep. Ray throwing long ball over the head. Ball broken up, and it's yeah, close. It's Jack Arnett in coverage. On the play. And I believe that was William Key. He had his man William Key on a little post route, but Jack made a great play and was able to break it up. Now they'll have a third down and long. That was a great ball by Jalen. He had his man maybe just a tad underthrown, but still a catchable ball. Jack just made a great play. Again, one of the fifth-year seniors that Eureka has on their defense, Jack Arnett. 
out of Princeville. On the one of those guys that before we talked even Hill. week one with Coach Barth, Jack was one of those guys that Coach Barth was really proud of in terms of his development as a leader and as a player. So McIntosh moves into motion. Three, or excuse me, third and 15. Ray dropping back to pass. Goes down the middle of the field, and oh, it's broken up by Garrett Wayne. <laughs> Almost I believe that was more like Jack Arnett had the pick and Garrett Wayne with the PBU on his teammate. Yeah, Jack was about to take that the other way, and I don't know that anybody would have stopped him, but unfortunately <laughs> ran into his own guy, Garrett Wayne. But still, fourth down here, uh, likely going to be either pinned deep or going to get a touchback here. Deep Offense is coming back out on the field. Spencer, 10. what do they need to do differently on this drive than they did Billy on the first Nelson. drive? I would like to see a little bit more running play. It looked like uh, Deloche had some good positive yardage on that first run. And then, uh, you know, maybe we try to get Caden a little warmed up in a sense. We're not trying to throw it too deep immediately. Let's get him completing some passes first. Levi, this is kind of odd. We see the uh, entire starting defense still out there for Eureka. They just dropped Maceo Williams back and to return the punt. The punt goes down, and it's going to roll into the end zone. I don't know, Levi, a little bit more hustle on that. That might be down on the one. Yeah, that was that was not a bad punt by any means, Spencer. Maybe if somebody gets down there a little bit quicker. Fortunately for our offense, though, it did roll into the end zone, and we're not going to be backed up against the goal line. So Eureka will start on their own 20-yard line. As they look to get some momentum going been a little bit of a slow start offensively and again their offense was on the bench for quite some time or on the sidelines at least just a very long offensive drive prolonged by penalties yeah just undisciplined play by the Red Devils maybe some calls that could have you know gone the other way but just you got to limit those penalties when you're on defense here's Burnaby trying to make some room Number looks like a two-yard gain Burnaby on the carry. But I like that, you know, like you gotta you gotta establish the run game. That's something that Coach Barth has really hammered to us is that we want the run game, we want a balanced offense, we want people to be scared of both aspects. Well, the reason for that is because he knows when you establish a run game and you have a good run game and a dominant run game, that opens up everything else in your playbook, that opens up all your other opportunities uh, to do other things. So establishing the the run is uh, is very key to opening up everything else in your playbook. Townsend and Burnaby in the backfield with Frazier. Three out wide. Frazier fakes the handoff. Looks for the bubble. Going to fling it sidearm, and it's behind an his target, pass. Kobe Newman. The well, he got hit as he threw it right there, and the Kobe ball was just Newman. a little bit behind him because of that, and maybe the ball's a little bit wet. Third Looked like it might have slipped out of his hands a little bit. For the Red but it's going to be third and long here, and Spencer, we got <laughs> we got to keep this defense off the field and rest them for a little bit before we put them back out there. Now they were out there for, again, a quite a spell. It was probably close to four and a half minutes, or probably closer to four minutes. But yeah, Eureka's offense in a third and eight. Likely a passing down. It'll be Frazier. Four men out wide. Frazier back to pass. Looks to go long. He's got Butler. Butler can't bring it in. Just out of reach of Jack Butler. And that's another three and out for the Red Devil Jack offense. Butler. Might have thrown that ball just a tad early, right before his break. Wasn't able to get out there. But, man, just another three and out from this offense. Eureka struggling to find their wheels Deep here offensively. For the Red Devils, and you got to think that maybe the loss of Sam Angel Bartles, Garcia is weighing on this offense a little bit. Well, they'll have some time on the sideline. Hopefully a shorter spell this time. Bartle's able to get this punt off. That one's a good one. Going towards the sideline, bouncing out at the 37. Ball goes out of bounds on about the 37 yard line. Well, 0-0 zero, zero. through about six minutes of play. 0-0, zero, zero, tightly contested game team. here at the beginning. Not really much going on offensively for either of these teams. Eureka's defense has played well. Rockford's defense has played well. But, I mean, without those penalties, Rockford really had nothing going either. Yeah, again, they've. we were talking about positive plays. At, the one that comes to mind, Jalen Ray's run, and that's about it in terms of positive movement. That from was this offense that wasn't off of penalties. That was the biggest play they had, and it was about five yards, <laughs> four yards, something like that. Every other play has been negative or, or stopped or an incomplete pass. Ray back in the pistol. Carry out in motion. It's going to be a swing pass to Carry. Carry with some blockers outside, and there's a little bit of a positive gain of five yards. 
call it for the regen. Well, that screenplay is a little tricky. You get your athletes out in space, and you've got blockers in front of them. They're going to go quick here and try to get back on the line, run another play. Yeah, like Rockford's been, you know, up-tempo. We're not seeing a lot of huddles Good out of them, maybe the after incompletions. But if there's positive Chris movement, they're, they're going up quick as Carey tries to take it to the middle, and there is nothing for him. The run game has been effectively stifled on these first couple of drives for Rockford. Ball Great response by the Eureka defense. Four, got a good Jack got a good Curry. chunk on first down and able to stand him up there on second down. Looks like he's still got a couple yards though. Three. Yep, third and four. Here's the play action. Ray looking to go deep towards the sideline. Ball in the air for a long time. Once again, good and Jack Arnett once again in coverage. Didn't get a hand on it. Ball looked like a little overthrown there, Levi. Yeah, ball was just a little Zero, bit overthrown, but Jack was with him the whole way. I still think even if that ball was on, it would have had to been perfect because Jack was playing such great defense there. Number 13, William and I don't think, like, the ball isn't Once slipping. Outside of that, the, the bad snap, it doesn't Nelson. look like the ball's been too slick, so it might just be, you know, a little overzealous by the quarterbacks, a little too much weight room, as we like to say. Could be weight room, could be a little bit of adrenaline going in the early part of this game. Finistad once again. And that one is almost blocked once again as it goes looping towards the sideline. It's going to be down inside the 20-yard well, line. Looked like it went out of bounds. Eureka got good pressure up the middle the there. Almost got to that one. Yeah, they got good pressure last time too. It's just they uh, clobbered Finistad instead of <laughs> getting the ball. So hey, but we didn't do it this time, and we got the ball back. So that's <laughs> that's the important thing. No <laughs> penalties on that drive by the defense ball is gonna and no penalties uh, on the other side either so you know, I think that was our first set of uh, granted there's been four total drives so I shouldn't get too crazy uh, excited but yeah don't get too ahead of yourself <laughs> couple of back to back drives with no flags is nice 826 left in the first Frazier Hands off, it's the freshman Deloche. Deloche trying to find some room and it's gonna be a one yard gain at best. Try to get him to the outside there and get him into space. Great containment by the Rockford defense there to get out there and stop it before he was able to get in, get into space and make a move. Jacoby picks up one yard, it will be second. Second and nine. Levi, what do you like to do in this situation? Probably not in like Madden, because if it's Madden, I'm playing four, four verticals all game. But if you're an actual offensive coordinator, what are you doing here? Right, well, if it's Madden, I'm chucking it deep. But <laughs> here, you know, maybe try to get your guys out in space because nothing really has been going. Try to get your guys in space on something short and get them to run a little bit after the catch. Uh, get close on a third down, see what they do here. They'll hand it off to Deloche, and he's got space to the outside, and he's going to put a move on a man, and going to be close, maybe just a little short of the marker, but a great run there, and looks like they're going to get back on the line quickly here, Spencer. A nice run from the freshman. It's a guy you were really high on in the preseason. Like he said, hurry up offense for the Red Devils. Going right back to the freshman, Deloche. Deloche with some room, able to get the first down, and he able to trip first forward for about a five-yard gain. First, like, actually Zero. gain first down of the game for either team. A great run there. Like we said, Jacoby Deloche, he actually has the second highest carries on the team over the senior Ben Burnaby, but the only guy above him is Angel Garcia, and he's out of the game today. So Jacoby Deloche going to be getting significant touches today. Oh, we'll see if they try to work him into the pass game at all. But he's been a pretty pure runner in terms of his touches so far. But, again, you like your versatility. We'll see if they give it to him for a fourth straight time. Fake the handoff instead. Frazier looking to go deep. He's looking for Hill. Hill's there. Hill slows down. He's got it in. We have and another deep pass. pass. Hill and Frazier. That Number connection has been five. money so far to start Sebastian the year. Well, I'll tell you what. Sebastian Hill, Hill was wide open. If that ball is three. just a little Eight. bit. If it's got a little bit more zip on it, Spencer, that's probably a touchdown. A little bit underthrown there, but Sebastian Hill able to readjust and make the catch there for a big game. There's our first big chunk play that doesn't come off of a penalty. That's what you like to see again. Frazier and Hill already demonstrating good chemistry in the first two weeks. We'll see if, uh, as we get closer to the red zone, if that's still the option. Six and a half minutes left. Frazier going back to pass once again. This time looking to the right side. He's going to air it out towards the corner. It's brought in. And touchdown. touchdown. Jack My Butler. Goodness, touchdown. what a ball from Caden Frazier. Right on the money. He was double covered. He had two defensive backs on him, and he dropped it right in the perfect spot for him to get that touchdown. I saw it. I had the perfect angle on it, Spencer. That was a great ball by uh, Caden Frazier there. Yeah, perfectly placed. We saw him working on that ball in warm-ups. 
right for that corner. Perfect ball placement. Jack Butler, heck of a catch. Jack Butler, a young guy, Number a sophomore, making a play there. Good touchdown for him right the there. Barkis on for the extra point and puts it through. And Eureka, a 7-0 ball game the in week three. Good, good drive Barkis. by the offense right there. Not too many plays. But Spencer, College you saw they established the run early seven. on in the drive. The and it opened up their pass game. Zero. Two passes, touchdown. No, I mean, it was exactly what you said. I mean, you, you know, again, Once like again, you build that run play, the safety pass. start having to cheat Eight in a little bit, linebackers start moving up, and the suddenly you fake two, that handoff. And you got guys like Jack Butler and Sebastian Hill down the field to throw to, and things well, the, get funky. The thing is, is Jacoby Deloche established himself as a problem on that drive. <laughs> they realized, okay, we got to do something about this guy. So they bring, the, they bring the safeties up, play a little bit tighter football, and uh, – Seabass was able to break free Number for a big gain. And then obviously Steven Jack Barkus. Butler on the touchdown. Once again, the that makes it 7 nothing quickly. Illinois, yeah, again, a really slow start in terms of uh, first couple Illinois. drives to the Red Devils offense, but a hot start, a quick start on that third one. Again, got to that third and one, hustled up onto the line, and Jacoby Deloche got a five-yard gain, Williams. and then it was curtains, courtesy of the passing game. There's 6.22 left in the first quarter as Barkus Gets ready to send this one back to Rockford. Here's the return from Rockford. Rockford trying to find some space, trying to get to the sideline and pushed Number out of bounds. We'll see if they're going to call it late. Timothy they're going to say it was right on the line. The but very, very close there, Levi. And Timothy Bearden right there on the return. The first it was close. I thought maybe Number we would have gotten a late hit there with the way they've been throwing the flags today. But no flag there. They're going to start on about the 24-yard line. And Rockford hasn't been able to figure it out offensively. Eureka's been playing pretty well uh, defensively. But Eureka had a slow start on their first two drives and then lit it up really easily. We'll, we'll see if Rockford has anything to say. Right. Here's the thing about Rockford's offense. That they're going to keep throwing it, Spencer. That's <laughs> like they're, they're going to do that. On the 24-yard line. Uh, let me check my notes 10. real quick. Jalen threw it 53 times last week and 45 times in week one. So they're not going to stop throwing the ball, Spencer, even, even if they're struggling to get it going in the early part. Ray's going to hand off. It's Carey. Carey trying to bounce to the outside and unable to do the so. Loss of two yards. Four, Jack Carey. Well, Austin Hopkins right there. Like I said, we're going to be calling his name a lot today. Uh, great job on the containment out there. Flew across the field. Made a great play on the tackle there. Yeah, he's been in the backfield for pass rushing and then in the backfield that time just on stopping the run, a guy that can do it all. Under six minutes left in the first quarter. Eureka up seven. Ray fakes the handoff, looking to roll out. Fires middle of the field. He's got a man. McIntosh, middle of the field. Jack Arnett trying to chase him down. McIntosh down to the 30-yard line. And a big chunk play there. As we, as we mentioned earlier, McIntosh, one of his favorite targets, one of the leading receivers on this team, was wide open in the middle of the field. There was nobody anywhere close to him. And a big chunk play. They're going to go hurry up here. Ray looks like a broken play. Miller can't bring him down and eventually does go down. Call it a sack for David Hill. Looked like there might have been some miscommunication there or something. That was a broken play from the start, <laughs> and Eureka took advantage of it, getting in the backfield to make it a play. Yeah, it looked like Ray was looking for that bubble screen, and there was nothing for him out there. The senior out of Mackinac, Illinois. Yeah, we'll call it a half sack for Christian Miller and a half sack for David Hill. Miller got Ray moving towards the ground, and Hill made sure he got there. Ray in the pistol once again. Hands off. Carey going up the middle. Nice run there for him. Looks like about two, three yards. But again, there's not much for Jack Carey. Jack Carey's a good runner. He's not finding anything against this front seven. No, this front seven for Eureka is, is stout, though. They are they're a good front seven, and uh, it's hard to run the ball against them. They're going to have a third and a, and a medium here, third and seven, third and eight situation here. And I would expect him to see him throw the ball, Spencer. Yeah, I mean, we're expecting to see him throw the ball on any down, first and ten, first and one, probably, if there was a penalty like that. Out wide, Carey. Carey's going to be there. It's going to be brought in. We've Hard shot there to finish off the play by Garrett four, Wayne. Him Jack and Malik Carey. Jones on the tackle. Great the defense there. They got pressure on the quarterback on once the again. Play. Fourth down Number here. Looks like they're going to go, Spencer. Malik yep. Jones. Just in that odd spot in terms of field goal range. Especially at the college level, you don't like to see kickers going out there for 35, 40 yarders too much. We'll see what they've got. Looks like they might just be trying to get them to jump. 
see if they actually run a play here. It is a fourth and three. But Spencer, this is a good spot to go for it if you're an, if you're an offense. Absolutely, especially if your first couple drives have not really gone anywhere. It's going to be a timeout taken by Coach Barth. Uh, timeout for the Red Devils. And we will do the Once same. 3.45 left in the first quarter. Eureka leading 7-0 right here on the Eureka Athletics page. And welcome back to McKenzie Field. Eureka leading, excuse me, 7-0 in their week three matchup against their conference rival, Rockford. Well, Spencer, out of the timeout. Rockford's got their offense back on the field. They are going to go for it here, it looks like. On the 24-yard line of the Red Devils. Could be a pretty key play in terms of momentum going forward if Eureka can get a stop, but also if Rockford gets a first down. As San McIntosh in motion. Ray in the pistol. Quick pass, McIntosh trying to bring it in. Tackling needed to be done, and it's going to be really close to that first down. It looks like he did get it. Eureka had a couple opportunities there to make a tackle and just were unable to do so. It is a first down. Coach Barth really thought that uh, he was down before then, but it was really close on that sideline. Official had a good look at it. It's also hard for us to see up here, Spence. We don't have yeah. a great view on that. Yeah, definitely a weird vantage point for us. It's going to be Ray now in first and ten. It's carry. Oh, weird play there. <laughs> Fakes the handoff and then runs it. It's a little read option and flicks it to his receiver. It's a little option <laughs> option screen there. I was, that was a weird little play. I mean, like you said and mentioned before, Getting Coach Barth said they're going to formation us to death. Yeah, they do some weird stuff on offense. But uh, it's because our quarterback, he's a versatile guy. He, he can run it. He's a big guy, but he can run it. A second and five, Ray fakes the handoff. They're trying that little screen again. Ray's going to rumble On himself, and that's going to be a first down once again inside the Jaylen 10 now. Ray. And like I said, Spencer, a guy that can Tackle run. They took it himself there. They were looking for that David little screen, Hill. but took it himself, was able to pick up the first down. They're going to have first, first and goal. For the Regents, it will be first yeah, I don't know if I've ever really goal. seen an option bubble screen type play before, but I, that's definitely the best description for it, like you said. Well, I guess Spencer, First if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it's worked from before, they're gonna they're gonna do it again. Especially if that's the most successful play they've used so far. Multiple gains of five or more on the last couple. First and goal here. Ray hands off. Carry, carry, trying to find his way through the, the middle. Boy, Spencer, it really four, looked Jack like there was a carry. holding there. Number twelve of the offense for one play. Did and Curtis Jose's off. helmet came off. He'll have to come off the field for a play. Per the rules, you know that he doesn't want to be coming off the field in the red zone, especially inside the 10. That's like prime tight end territory, I'd say. I say that, and then they pull both tight ends off of the field. So. <laughs> Jankovic heads to the sideline as well. We're just swinging and missing on predicting <laughs> stuff today, Spencer. I'm predicting a touchdown for Rockford. <laughs> we'll see. Second and goal now. Man in motion, carry. Ray dropping back. Ray looking to fire to the end zone, and uh, no one is there on that one. The third and goal. Eureka's defense playing really well inside the 10-yard line here. Backs against the wall. They have a chance here to make a stand. But yeah, then the again, we could see him go for it on fourth down again. True. And then again, like, they've got a young kicker, Finistad. He's also their punter. But, you know, when you got a fifth-year quarterback, you kind of – kind of trust the guy a little bit more than your sophomore kicker. You tend to trust the guy that you've been with for longer, the guy that you've seen make plays. I mean, they've seen this guy do this who knows how many times throughout his career. And he did it last week against the College of Scholastica. Ray's going to turn back, fire flag route there, and it's knocked out of his hands. Hanson Johnson in coverage. 
Well, he was one guy that I highlighted pregame. The freshman has been playing outstanding these first couple weeks, making a big play there on third down. Looks like they are going to go for a field goal here, Spencer. Yeah, we'll see what Keegan Finistad has for us. It's fourth and goal from the nine-yard line. They're going to have to be a uh, quick snap and fire, I think, because uh, this punts have been a little slow off the delivery. Here it goes. Up and blocked! The Finistad falls on it, but it does not matter. No points for Rockford. Well, Spencer, you called it. We did get one thing right. Uh, great pressure up the middle around the edges. They really just had pressure everywhere on that. Uh, that was doomed from the start, Spencer, is how we like to say it. Both getting a piece of the ball. Credit Donnie Hathaway and Hanson Johnson for the block kick. Both getting a piece of the kick, and the Red Devils will take over. First the only thing unfortunate about that is that we're going to start <laughs> offense <laughs> on really close to the goal line, inside the 15-yard line here. It's not too terrible, but still you'd rather have better field position, but I'm pretty sure that they'll take that block field goal. Absolutely. 7-0 lead still intact with minute 44 left in the first. Frazier in the shotgun. Butler in motion. Frazier handing off to Loesch, looking to get the jet sweep, going out wide, and able to semi get to Number the edge. Looks like a two-yard gain. Jacoby well, Spencer, keep feeding the hot hand. The Jacoby Deloche has the hot hand. Good drive First last time. He had two runs. Was, uh, was very successful. Will Excuse me, he had three runs. <laughs> um, but handing it to him again there on first down and picking up four yards, which is really all you need on first down. Yeah, again, like, if you're getting four yards per carry, that's a first down every third play. Deloche will come off of the field, and it's like Townsend. I thought, yeah, Townsend came onto the field as the up back. Burnaby in the backfield with Frazier. Three out wide for the Red Devils. Hands off. Burnaby now looking to get to the edge. Burnaby gets brought down near the 20-yard line. Well, Spencer, I tell you what, this Eureka offense First is starting to see a lot of space on the, the edges. The running backs are starting to get out Williams. into space on the edges, and that's where you've seen the a lot of their the runs going. Uh, these The last few times they've ran the ball, they've all the been outside. Devils. They're trying to get to the edge and break one free on this defense. Third down here, short yardage, about four yards to the first down. Let's see what they draw up here. Yeah, they, three, again, we highlighted this when we were doing our game prep. It's more of a 3-4 defense for Rockford. They're in a 3-3-5 right now, though. It's Frazier on third down. Fakes the handoff for Burnaby. Frazier going to fire it down the field. It's Swike. Swike brings it in. Takes a We've shot. A goes down to the 36. Down first down for Eureka. Well, Spencer, as I recall, Austin week one, we saw them Swike. do that a lot. Those little short curl routes Austin for chunk Swike. yardage. And that's what we saw right there. Austin Swike. A little curl route just, for the, just enough to get the first down. I didn't quite read if that was a zone or man coverage, but if it was a zone, he found the soft spot, to say the least. And if it was man, his man was nowhere to be found. And that's what they tell you a lot of times against the zone is find a spot that's open and sit there and just wait for the ball. And that will be the end of the first quarter. Eureka leading 7 nothing against the Rockford Regents. And welcome back to Pete Fiorito Stadium. 7-0 lead for the Red Devils, second and 10. Or excuse me, first and 10, I apologize. Misleading already. The Red Devils offense is leading, though. Frazier looks to fire. 
He's got Glover in the middle of the field as he's brought down at the 48-yard line the in, in plus territory now. Alex, Alex Glover, another Glover. guy that we talked about in the beginning of the game. That was Michael a good ball there by Frazier. Put him Napoleon perfectly Williams. in stride on the slant across the middle of the field. Able to pick up the, the first down there. We have the 49 the here of Rockford the near midfield. We've been talking about how our predictions have really just come, just been wrong the entire entire game so far. I was wrong. Uh, I was like, let's get some short passes to get Frazier warmed up. He was like, nah, gee, I'm going to keep throwing it deep. Completed two, and now the short passes are clicking for him. So, you know what? What do I? There's a reason I'm up here, you know? Well, I think the key is, is that they're getting that run game going, and that's opening everything else up, and they've been able to be more successful in other aspects. Here's Burnaby. Burnaby with a lot of space. Burnaby with a first down and more as he's upended. It is a first down at the 33-yard line. Ben Biggest run of the game for either guy. Well, Deloach or Burnaby. Well, Spencer, I talked about they had been getting the ball to the outside that time, Junior. straight up the middle, just a wide open hole for him to run. 16-yard gain there. Good run by the senior Ben Burnaby. Eureka moving once again. Eyeing another touchdown and a two-touchdown lead, perhaps. Week three, again, 2-0 and on the season. Coach Barth's best start since 2019. And trying to get to that 3-0 and mark, which would be their best start since 2018 when they won the conference. Frazier is going to hand off to Loesch to Loesch up the middle. Zero. Like about a three-yard gain there. Deloche on the carry. Back-to-back -back home matchups for Eureka. Joey They've got this Alvarez. game against Rockford this weekend the and the next weekend, St. Norbert three, out of the Green Bay seven. area heads to town. And that'll be another NAC conference matchup. What will be nice for this Eureka team to have their first two conference games at home. That's huge uh, for a football team because it would be really nice to start out the conference 2-0. and yeah, getting your home home fans behind you. And again, that week five matchup looms large with Aurora. But right now the task at hand is Rockford. Don't want to look past opponents at any point. Deloche looking to find some room, able to get some room. Jacoby we get shoved Deloche forward at the, the end carry. of that. It's like another two-yard gain there. We're going to have about third and five. We're going to have about a third and four, third and five here situation inside Ball the 30-yard line. The Spencer, yard line. We're in striking distance it for this Eureka offense. Absolutely. This is where, uh, right about where Jack Butler made that nice touchdown catch. We know Frazier's got the arm to get it to the end zone. But we also know that these running backs like Ben Burnaby and Gabe Townsend would certainly like to uh, do it themselves if given the opportunity. It's going to be Frazier. He's going to hand off to Burnaby. Burnaby up the middle, and it's going to be close Burnaby to a first down. On the carry. And they're marking him just short. They're going to go here, Spencer, quickly. Tackle Taking a page out of Rockford's book here. Chancellor Bradley Jr. Quick snap, Burnaby up the middle. Burnaby with plenty of room in the first down. First down a for gang the Red tackle Devils there. and Ben Burnaby on the carry. Well, it looked like Rockford had good pressure on the edges, but unfortunately that play was going up the middle. There was a hole up in the middle, and One it was able to get enough for a first down. Joey Alvarez, or excuse me. Chancellor Bradley Jr. Alvarez. The ball on the 20-yard line of the Regents. 7-0. First, zero. first down Devils. for Eureka. Eureka driving once again. Again, a really slow start. Two three and outs for the Eureka offense, and then a touchdown in the last drive, and looking to do the same on this one. Frazier fakes the handoff, looking towards Hill. He's going to launch it to the wheel route with Butler, and it is incomplete. incomplete. He was it looking for Jack Butler there, but looked like Jack got college. stopped on his route, maybe got pushed out of bounds there, but was unable to, to complete his route, and that's why there was nobody there in the end zone. But thankfully, an incomplete pass there. He was, he was unable to get a foot down. Just a broken play there for Eureka. They're going to have second and ten. We could hear the coordinators calling for a, a hold, and it certainly looked like it looked like Butler was starting to, you know, continue that wheel route, and suddenly he was both shoulders looking at it. Frazier hands off Burnaby with some room on the draw. He's got plenty of room. Burnaby up the middle, and he's cut down on the five. But another first down for the Eureka offense, and now certainly. 
and striking distance. Will well, the Eureka off is starting to gain success with College. running the ball up the middle, the ball maybe starting to figure some things out blocking-wise. But, I mean, this offensive line is starting to create some big holes the for these running backs, the and they're getting down. chunk plays on just draw plays up the middle, Spencer. Yeah, offensive coordinator Sam Durley certainly cooking up there over on the sideline. He doesn't he Rockford has no idea what's about to hit him now. He again established the edge runs, but now we're getting that those gut punches that are really starting to do some damage. Here's another one. Burnaby looking to move around, trying to shake a defender. And brought down in the backfield. The so Will Havens, their leading tackler. The the well, got to do it. When you get into this area of the football field as a defense, you start to tighten up a little bit. You're expecting Joey a run more than you are a pass. So that's probably what we saw there. Stacking up on the run and was able to get him stood up pretty Ball close to the line the of scrimmage there. Again, this is where we talk about your, your playbook suddenly becomes limited in terms of what you can do when you're inside of your 10-yard line because that end zone plays as kind of a 12th defender in a sense. It's only so far you can throw it. They talk about the out-of-bounds all the time being another defender, an extra defender that you have to contend with as an offense. Frazier. Hands off, Burnaby up the middle. Burnaby diving towards the end zone. I think he's just short, and he is. Ben Burnaby well, just is unable to keep his feet the there. If he would have kept line. his feet, he would have been in the end zone for six. It'll be a hurry-up play here. Eureka's trying to play Devils fast. On the one -yard line of Rockford. Jacoby Deloche in the backfield. And a timeout being taken. <laughs> Eureka, their second charge time out of the half. Would have liked to see Jacoby get a touchdown there. <laughs> well, there's still time. It's the third down. It'll be a third and one. Well, the third and goal from the one yard line. Likely, likely going to see a run play, I would imagine. But Levi, early on in this game, who's standing out to you in this? Obviously, Caden Frazier had a nice couple of passes, but is there anybody else jumping out? Well, the offensive line. <laughs> the offensive line is doing a great job. Uh, and, uh, you know, you like to give them attention because they don't get too much attention. But they're doing a great job here in the early part of this game. Springing these running backs did a great job in the first quarter. First couple drives, obviously, were a little rocky. But after that, really started to figure it out. Started to run the ball more successfully. Running backs are doing a great job. Uh, all of our running backs, actually, each have one touchdown on the season. So the next one by a running back is going to break the tie, the three-way <laughs> tie that we have. But unfortunately, Angel Garcia isn't able to do anything about his today. But between these two, and they're gonna have Burnaby back there for third down. It's gonna be Frazier taking the snap under center. We really don't see this too often. See if it's a tush push. Frazier getting real low, and Burnaby just lowering the crown of the helmet, getting touchdown, in. Touchdown, a 13-0 lead for the Red Devils now. Well, Bur <laughs> Ben Burnaby's a big guy, and he's a hard guy to bring down. And when you get in situations like that, where it's just a big old pile of, of big human beings, Spencer, that's what it is when you're on the goal line. Burnaby able to push through for a touchdown and does break the tie between the running backs uh, for touchdowns. Oh, I'm sure Jacoby Deloche is going to get his chance to try to tie it back up later on. And it looks like some movement. See if it was the defense making an early run or if it was the offense. 9.34 left in the first half. Offside, defense number 97, penalties decline, start for goal. Really no point in taking number that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Except to be like, hey, look, similar penalty counts, I guess, but like, not that big of a deal. Be Barkus to kick. Kick is up, nearly blocked, but through the uprights and a flag coming in late. Flag on the play, the kick was good by Stephen. Just Barkus. flags all over the place today. Spencer is just one of those games. Laundry day on Saturday, I guess. I like to do mine on Tuesday, but you know some people like Saturdays, and you know. Yeah, sometimes I got to do mine in the middle of the week. Depends on how sweaty I get, really. <laughs> Speaking of sweat, nice day. I'm not sweating up here. I know it was last game. It was a little, a little warm. The sun was out, but personal foul, roughing the snapper, defense number eight. Roughing the snapper. The kickoff, successful one-point drive. Roughing yeah. the snapper, Spencer is going to be the call there. 
You know, I don't like that one. Snapper's a tough job. You don't need to get roughed up on that. I believe like it's probably likely somebody lined up line right across from him. Uh, and you can't do that. Uh, you got to give the snapper a chance Ugo to at least up it, like, raise his head up. <laughs> Offensive line getting a shout out on the PA system. Like you were saying, they kind of deserve, I would say, on that drive especially. That yeah, great job that drive. drive really, really just a tough Red drive for Devils. them. Ran the ball a lot that drive. That we're going to be kicking from the 50-yard line. This is going out the back of the end zone. Yeah, we'll see what, how far Barkus can send this into the housing community behind the field. As I imagine, <laughs> we could see an upright. Maybe a little doink. We could. I hope he does. I'm sure the student section will let us know if it actually goes through. Uh, again, we have a weird vantage point. It'll be hard to tell if it goes through for us, but... You know, it's fun to watch. Barkus with a 14-0 lead, kicking back off to Rockford. High kick. It's going to be, I think that was, I think it was good. We're getting a signal from Andrew Schulte down in the student section that it's good. Andrew Schulte with the eyes of an eagle there. He saw that from a mile away. Nine thirty-four left in the first half. Eureka up 14-0. Levi, this Eureka defense has been fantastic today. Outside of the penalties, there's been nothing really being gained by Rockford. Outside of what, the th their third drive, I would say, they started moving the ball a little bit? Well, absolutely. Oh, then they blocked that kick on the last one. They did. They were able to block the kick. But the thing about this defense is, is you've got leaders at all levels. You've got leaders on the line. You've got leaders in the on secondary. The you've got leaders in the linebackers. You've got leaders everywhere all over this field, guys that are experienced, guys that are going to make plays. And even if, you know, a freshman is struggling, they've got their senior, junior, whatever there to help them out. Ray dropping back to pass. Pressure in the backfield. Once again, it's Carey with plenty of room. Carey with a first down. Carey cutting out the middle. Trying to get it to the sideline. Brought down by down Brendan Durr. By four. But a nice Jack chunk Carey. play for Rockford. Another setup screen there, and he had space. Number there was really nobody in front of him. Uh, and he was able tackle. to get a good amount first of yards there on first down. Another first down. 47. Again, Rockford was moving the ball well pretty much up until they got into the, you know, inside the 10-yard line where a lot of offenses tend to struggle. But hopefully uh, Eureka can force a turnover perhaps, maybe get that third touchdown up before Eure or, uh, Rockford can hang up anything. Pistol set once again. Three receivers out wide, carry in motion. We're going to swing it out towards carry. Forcing back inside. Woods doing a good job keeping contained. And Woods and Hill combined for the tackle, Jack but a really Curry. nice play by Chris Woods out in the open field. Well, this tackle offense, they swing the it out one way. They're going to come back and swing it back Chris the other Woods. way. Try to get this number defense wore out, David running them on different sides of the field. Gain of about two Chris yards Woods had a, second and eight. The ball one of the, the harder hits I've seen in a football third. game in person in that week one matchup. A nice tackle there. Ray once again in the pistol. Some movement. And an offside will be the call. A lot of movement. Everybody jumped. <laughs> Jalen Ray quickly up to the line to tell him it was on us, but <laughs> we'll see what the what the call is. A little bit of a hard count. And counted too hard, in fact, goes on the offense. False start on Rockford. Well, Spencer, you see that a lot. If the offensive it line twitches at all and there's a reaction and by the defensive 13. line, it's going to be a false start every For time. Rockford. It's who initiates it. Just because the defense crossed the line of scrimmage doesn't mean that it's going to be an offsides. If the offensive line twitch first, that's going to be an automatic false start. It's kind of the opposite of what they tell you in terms of, like, retaliation. A lot of times we'll talk about in football that the second guy to do something is the guy that gets the personal foul. Not in this case. No, not in this case at all. They were drawn off sides by the offensive line. And it works the other way around. If the defense jumps and then the offense jumps in motion, that's uh, uh, off sides on the defense. But like you said, in this case, it was the offensive line that flinched. Be a second and 13. A little stoppage of something here. And timeout being We've taken. We've got a timeout on the field for Rockford. Rockford. Rockford's first of the half. It's nothing to be too concerned about. Eureka up two touchdowns. Levi, what's working well for the Rockford offense? Well, they're getting those screen passes out into space. And like I said, swing it one way, swing it back the other way. 
uh, trying to just spread this defense out and not have them so tight because, like I said, Eureka likes to play a tight defense. Their linebackers are two or three yards off the line behind their linemen, and then their safeties are not far off of that. Um, so they play really tight defense. Um, this offense trying to spread them out, get them to spread out a little bit, try to open up some things downfield. But the swing passes, the screen passes, they're starting to create some space, starting to gain some yardage. Then do you think that is a, a strategy so that you can get more running room, perhaps less of a, a strain on Jalen Ray? Well, I know some offensive coordinators like to do that, but me personally, you know what? I, I think that uh, <laughs> they just like to throw. Yeah. 751, second and 13 for the Rockford offense. Ray and the pistol set. Jack Carey in motion once again. They're going to get it to him on the in the flat, excuse me, as he drops it. And we had a I believe they do rule it a fumble. And then a fumble. Yeah, I think that was a fumble all the way. It looked like he took a couple steps before he dropped that one. The Rockford Ends up losing two on that one as well. But once again, Spencer, another swing pass trying to get it out there in space Jack with blockers. Curry. I think the critical Tackle part of that, though, is you usually want the pass play to pick up yards Number and not lose three, them. Well, that is usually the goal on offense is uh, to gain yards, but <laughs> Eureka's defense had something else to say about that. Regions. Yeah, the Eureka defense has been swarming everywhere. A lot of good open field plays being made. We'll see what Rockford com comes back with, a third and 16. Ray dropping back, trying to find some time. Miller in pursuit. A flag coming in late. Ray throws it across his body and knocked out of the hands there. Pass but a flag on that on makes play. me think it's pass interference or a holding. Looks like that is the signal as a hold. I'll tell you what, this coaching staff and these fans are going to be real upset if they call a penalty on this secondary. Holding. And they will call a holding on Eureka. Automatic first down. They say automatic first down, but I don't know how a hold is an is automatic first, first down. It is first and ten for Rockford on their own. Yeah, I don't. On the 49-yard line. Spencer, of the if I'm not mistaken, yeah, that should enough. still be third down. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't. Because pass interference is the 15-yarder. But they did call hold. I'm not quite sure. I'll be honest. I'll look that up at halftime. Under seven minutes to go. So once again... It's a third down stop for the Eureka defense that instead is a first down for Rockford because of a penalty. Ray handing off. Different tailback than Jack Carey the out there. Is number Carl Jones is Carl on the carry Jones. on that. Lost a yard. Tackle on the play by number 94. Well, it's got back to the line Christian of scrimmage. Rockford Miller. still struggling to run the ball against this Eureka defense. No uh, game like we said, those front seven play a huge Rockford. factor in every game that they're in. They're going to make plays. They're going to break through the line and put pressure on the quarterback and the running backs. Rockford really going with that hard count. We see guys not crossing the line on that, but Donnie Hathaway certainly flinching. He's ready to go. I think they might be trying to take some time off the clock here. Spencer, not give Eureka another opportunity to put more points on the board. Really taking as much as they can. Ray fires it down the middle of the field. McIntosh We've brings it in and brought down by Hanson Johnson. McIntosh again, Number one of his favorite targets. Decron open on that little McIntosh post right over the middle of the field, the wide open. Great ball from Jalen Ray. Hit him in stride. Again, I think that was McIntosh earlier in the game that had that nice catch on a very similar route. It was. First and ten. So on another chunk the play there for Rockford. They, uh, again, College. they're getting these chunk plays on their drives, but a like the scoreboard showing, no points to show for it. Ray once again in the pistol. He'll call carry over to his side, actually. Be a hard push, swing pass out wide. Spin move put on Johnson. We've and it looks like Wayne on the tackle on that one. Timothy Bearden. Well, that's going to be Timothy Bearden, First the guy that's returning kicks 14, for him. Hampson, An athletic guy, a quick guy. Again, trying to get their guys out in space, trying to get blockers, get them down the field, get them moving. And Spencer, they are taking a lot of time off of this clock. They're yeah, really trying to keep the Eureka offense off the field, I would imagine. Eureka did start with the ball, so it could be the strategy of get the clock down as low as possible. You punch one in, then you get the ball back, maybe tie it up quickly in the uh, beginning of the second half. 
Eureka obviously hoping they don't do that. Here's Ray looking to fire over the middle of the field. Jose just out of his reach. Well, Spencer, he had him. He was he was open. He got past our linebackers. And he was breaking free back there. No safety over the top. Yeah, that's as good as a look as you're going to get as a quarterback and tight end on that. Got a player down on the Eureka side. Looks like Williams. It is Masio Williams. Been good in coverage. We're going to step aside as they work on the uh, injured player. Check on him. Again, 14-0 our score. Under five to go. Eureka leading. Williams able to make it off the field under his own power. Good sign to see as they looking to perhaps a cramp or something like that. They're really pounding liquids. But third and seven for the Rockford offense. Third and Ball seven on the Eureka 21. Ray looking to throw. Ray slide arm slings it out. Complete pass. Donnie Hathaway with a breakthrough on the line the there. Put a big hit on Jalen Ray. Donovan He's staying on the Hathaway. field as of now, keeping the offense out there. Looks like they are going to go here, Spencer. And Levi, if you're in a, you know, you're, you're going for it on fourth it down. Is this is a decision, obviously, they're comfortable with. Why not try to run it on that type of play? They're, they're seeming like they're getting some yards on that. You can get to a fourth and two, and it's a lot more manageable than a fourth and seven. We got a problem. We got the coach on the field here. Yeah, obviously frustrated about something. But I think they're on that play, Spencer. They were having success getting the ball to the outside and short passes, and that was the goal there to set them up for a possible fourth down. Discussion being had with the officials. The game clock reached zero. I'm not sure if... Well, Spencer, I don't even think we were ready to play because we've got two offic yeah. officials over there talking to the Rockford coaching staff. Really unsure of what's going on here. Uh, yeah, I. Perhaps there's a, a disagreement on a lack of call. Perhaps uh, I, I really don't know. Now it looks like there's a timeout. Yeah, I'm really, really confused. This is where I need like, <laughs> we need to mic up Coach Barth just so we can kind of hear what he's saying on these uh, types of situations where like. Everyone's just kind of standing around. The officials aren't quite sure if, like. It is a fourth down. So the officials, you know, calling everyone back onto the field. I don't think anybody got charged for a timeout. It might have just been a little, like, uh, official will give Coach Barth an explanation on this. So I imagine they won't roll the play clock yet. But the play clock did go down to zero. It did. But, again, like you said, we weren't ready to play because the officials were on the sideline. Looks like we're ready to play. Both teams are lined up with <laughs> really no explanation of what's going on here. No, the crowd was kind of waiting for their it cue to kind of get loud again, and then it was like, oh, oh wait. Now I think we're going back to football. Ball Whistle has been blown. We'll see what we've got. Fourth and seven. Eureka. Four wide receivers for Jalen Ray to play around with. Ray in the pistol. Carry in motion. Ray. Woods gets a hand on him. Can't do it. And it's picked off. Eureka going the other way. 
moving up the field and to the 27-yard line. By number 14. Hanson Johnson making an impact once again. Well, Spencer, that's Hanson Johnson once again, the freshman. He had a gap on his receiver there. I thought that he could have maybe got the completion, but Hanson just made a great play, closed the gap, got the interception, and Chris Woods also is putting pressure on the quarterback, and Eureka's going to get a sideline warning here. They got a little too excited after the interception, but rightfully so. <laughs> Great play by the freshman. Once again, number Fourth down anyways. Hanson Incompletion Johnson. or anything would have turned the ball over. The freshman with an interception. But an interception gets the crowd the going Nevis a little bit more. First and 10 on their own 28-yard line. Opportunity for the Eureka offense to go up three touchdowns perhaps. And that would certainly be an exclamation point on this first half if they can do it. 434 left, plenty of time for Caden Frazier and his guys, Jacoby Deloche in the backfield. It was a Ben Burnaby touchdown in the last drive for Eureka. Frazier looking to sling it. Got some heat in his face, lobs it down the sideline, and Glover can't quite bring it in. Frazier's a little slow to get up on that. He the took a big hit there. Was number 19, Alex Glover. But Spencer, plenty of time here for them to go down and score a touchdown. To See if they try to run some clock second off, not give Rockford an opportunity to get a two for one with them getting the ball back in the second half. I was going to say, I'd like to see them run the ball a little bit. There's plenty of time you don't have to worry about. Like, again, like you don't have to run a two-minute drill in something like this. You can keep your entire playbook open. And who am I to say acting like... Sam Durley doesn't have a clue how to run an offense. Heck of a quarterback here at Eureka. Doing a good job as a coordinator, certainly this year especially. He's got 2-0 and to his name, Jacoby Deloche up the middle. Great play call there. And a first down with Deloche down near the first 46. For the Red Again, Devils, hey, zero. that's why Coach Durley does what he does, and I do what I do. Deloche well, there was that offensive the line carry. again, yep. creating a big hole for Jacoby to run through. Eight, Great Jones gain there. Jr. And like the we said, Spencer, running the football the here, College. first down, running first the clock down. Ten. Try not to put too much clock, too much time on the clock, excuse me, for this Rockford offense to come down and maybe score. Glover in motion, 4 0 -oh -oh on the clock. Frazier quick throw, it's to Hill. Hill trying to shake a tackler and spins forward for a six yard gain. Number five, Second catch Sebastian of the game for Hill. Hill. Hill felt that tackle was a little late. Caden well, Frazier Spencer, another little Sebastian just short Hill curl route. You get a reception. chunk play on first down, and that's been working there a lot for this Eureka offense. We saw it work in week one. Now here we are in week three seeing it work as well. Down to the 48-yard line of Rockford. Eureka chipping away, second and four now. Certainly a manageable down. Glover once again in motion. Frazier in the backfield with Deloche. Going to hand off to Deloche. Deloche looking to bounce it outside. Cuts back first down and some more. First down, a five-yard gain zero, for the freshman. Getting a lot of yards on those little counter run plays. Tackle Fake on it one way, bounce it out to the outside the other way. Delgado and uh, they've run Deloche. that a couple times now, and Jacoby Deloche is finding space and making the defense pay for it. Yeah, it's using really good vision for a freshman. Again, we talked about how the game the speed half. between – college and high school can be certainly a shock to some guys, especially as a running back. No problem so far. And he's a hard runner, Spencer. He He's a hard guy to bring down. And uh, and he's not small either by <laughs> any means. First and 10. The opponent's 39. Somebody loses a shoe. As Number Burnaby four, goes down. Ben Burnaby two on yard the gain. Carry. He picks up two yards. Frazier with a completion there of somebody's shoe. Tackle on the play, number 32, Nasir Lamar. 220 uh, left, second and eight. Rain starting to come back through, down a little bit. Second and eight. Makes you feel like it's football season, I'll tell you what. A little rain game, nothing like it. Well, the difference is we've got artificial turf on the field. Mm. Frazier will drop back. Little out route to Jack Butler across the 25. Two, down Jack out around the 22-yard line. Little screen pass out to him. A little out route, excuse me. Able to gain a lot of yards there. Down to the 22. The but as I was saying, we've got the artificial turf here, Spencer. So you're not going to have to deal with mud and wet grass, stuff like that. 
the turf is nice in that sense. I mean, all you have to deal with is the pellets kind of sticking to you everywhere. Uh, I would like to say excellent you know, avoidance there by the uh, cameraman on the sideline there. He about got clobbered. He stuck to his guns. That's what you like to see as a cameraman, tell you what. A little agility out there. I love it. I just ducked out of the way. Frazier in the backfield. Hands off Burnaby. Burnaby up the middle on the draw once again. He's got some room. Looking to lower the boom. Instead, he draws a juke. And a touchdown for Ben Burnaby. Touchdown. Touchdown. Tanner Lash with a great block in the second level. And Burnaby used it perfectly. Went to the other side of it. Great block. Sprung him free for the touchdown. And, man, Burnaby showing a little bit of uh, deception. He dropped the shoulder for a second. Instead, went with a juke. Guy ate some turf, and we've got a 20-0 ball game. Well, I'm sure when you're seeing a guy that big coming at you and lowering the shoulder, shoulder that you're probably trying to just plant yourself <laughs> in your ground so you didn't get run over, but instead he gets put on a highlight reel. Barkis booms one through and a 21-0 first half for Eureka. And again, as good as a, a start as you can really have. Well, ringing out on the first two drives, three touchdowns on the last three. Yeah, really starting to open this game up. This Rockford offense is not going to have a lot of time. And uh, with them lining through the football, they're going to be throwing it a lot here. And we could be seeing 60-plus pass attempts from Jalen Ray in this one. And this game keeps getting like it is. Especially being down by this many points. <laughs> you start to get desperate a little bit as an offense, trying to get back into the game, trying to do whatever you got to do. Rockford will start with the ball after half as well. So this is an opportunity, again, a big drive here, trying to get some semblance of points, if it's a field goal or a touchdown even. But again, they're a really good opportunity to get points. Jose couldn't bring in that catch, just overthrown, and then the block kick on this side. You know, it could be a 10-21 ball game. Well, what you're seeing is you're seeing Rockford miss opportunities and the Eureka defense making them pay for it. Miss an opportunity uh, to get a touchdown on the, uh, the drive where they kick the field goal, blocked. Miss an opportunity to get a touchdown down here in the red zone, intercepted, going the other way. Barkis sends it deep. It's Bearden ready to run. Sentinay can't bring him in. And Townsend kind of runs him out of bounds. Return, number 82, out Timothy near the 28-yard line is where they're going to mark him. 126 left in the first half. If you're just joining us, Eureka up 21 to zero. The third drive touchdown from Caden Frazier to Jack Butler, set up by a nice play from with Frazier to Hill. But now it's Ben line, Burnaby with Rockford two rushing touchdowns, one from the one, and then one of 20 plus, I would say. I don't remember the exact yard he was at, but I believe it was over 20 yards. Demonstrating some agility and strength, punching his way through. As Jalen Ray tries to get his guys onto the scoreboard. Ray, quick pass out wide. McIntosh with it, Wayne in pursuit. Trying to get to the edge and out of bounds. It'll stop the On clock. The and that's another thing, Levi, we didn't really consider. Uh, Rockford McIntosh. probably doesn't have too many timeouts Back left. On the play by number 22, no, I think, Malik I believe they Jones. have two left. Unless, well, Please here's the thing, Spencer. I'm not really sure what happened down here on that fourth down. Four. I'm not sure if that was a timeout or not. So I'm not sure if they have two or one left. I know that they had two before that, but I'm not sure if a timeout was used there or not. So they either have two or one. Gain of five yards, it's second and five for Rockford. But the difference between two timeouts and one timeout is, is a pretty big difference. Yeah, it definitely limits your ability to play call. Hathaway once again in the backfield, pass is dropped. Pass I believe that was key. William Key, number 13. Well, he was open, Spencer, just unable <laughs> to bring Third it in. five for Rockford. Yeah, you got to be a little frustrated for uh, – Jalen Ray's got to be a little frustrated. There's been some drops. Um – but he's got to be frustrated with himself. He's missed a couple of opportunities on those deeper passes, well, just slightly overthrown. It could be even more frustrating when you've got pressure in your face every down, <laughs> and this Eureka defense is doing a good job getting pressure on him. Here's Ray trying to fire it deep towards the sideline. It caught in stride. It's Maurice Williams, and eventually run out of bounds. But, again, that's what we've been talking about. Ray's got a good Maurice arm, and when he's on, Williams. he's going to connect. Yeah, you can't count him out just because he hasn't been performing well in this first half. A great ball there. That was right on the money in between two guys. 
and a chunk play, that changes the whole narrative of this drive and how this half is going to end. Almost into the red zone now after that play. Ray hands off for Carey. Carey pushing his way forward. This is best run of the game, I would say. It looks like a run of six. Yeah, definitely his best run of the game. He hasn't, he hasn't been able to get much going. Under a minute Gain now in the first four, half. Second and six. Four split out wide. Ray. High snap brings it in. Quick pass. I believe that's On the like uh, Beer, or, Bearden. Yeah, that's right. Timothy Another Timothy design Bearden. screen yeah. there. And uh, looks like we might have a timeout. The play by so they did three. have two left. So no, again, no Gary timeout was charged Wayne. on that uh, – Stoppage. I don't really know what else to call it. It's just a stoppage. The officials are having conversation with the Rockford sideline and their coaches, Rockford. but their nothing really came half. of it. There weren't any flags thrown, but you know we've got no timeouts. I would assume left for Rockford. They called one earlier in the first quarter, I believe. So 45 seconds, third and five. They've been going for almost every fourth down outside of the Ball one field goal attempt. Oh, I would definitely expect them to see them line. go for it here. Will be third and uh, four being down as many as you are and then getting the ball back in the second half. Of course, you're not risking too much uh, with as little time as, as there is left in this half. You're not risking too much with Eureka's offense going down. The, not that they don't have the power to. Right. But... <laughs> As an offensive coordinator, you're thinking, okay, I'm not risking too much. And as a head coach, too, I'm not risking too much here going for it. We're down 21 points. We need to put points on the board. We're getting the ball back after halftime. This is a chance for us to do something and, and change the narrative of the game. 45 seconds for the Rockford Third offense inside of the Rockford. red zone. Coach Barth trying to make some noise, On the get some noise, that is, out of the student Devils. section in the sideline. Ray in the pistol. Here's Ray. Slings it out wide and passes low really and dropped. Pass to four, that looked like a good Jack play there, Perry. Levi. Yeah, it looked like he had a <laughs> lot of green grass in front of him. Uh, just and another screen pass. They swung it one way, swing it back the other way, just like we've been saying. Four another screen pass by the Rockford for offense, just unable to get it out there to the him, and fortunate the for the Eureka College. defense. The fourth and five. Let's see if Eureka can come up with another stop. And again, no timeouts left for Rockford. But a timeout will be taken by Eureka on this play. No timeouts left for either team now. Levi, first half standouts. You got to look at Ben Burnaby for one on the offensive end, but really this entire defense has been all over the place. Well, I mean, in I, a good way. I could stand here and point people out that have been playing well this whole first half. Obviously, you got 21 points on the board as an offense, and you've got zero points on the board as a defense. I mean, there's a lot of guys <laughs> that I could sit here and say, yeah, this guy's playing well. This guy. But I think mainly the fronts yeah. for Eureka, the offensive line, the defensive line. And then extending from that, you get good play from your running backs, quarterbacks, wide receivers, because your offensive line is playing well. Your offensive line, offensive, excuse me, offensive line plays well. You've got time for your quarterback. You've got rushing lanes for your running backs. And you can really just open things up. And, uh, you know, really just a good job by the lines here. I mean, uh, Eureka's defensive line also doing a great job. It feels like they've been getting pressure every down on Jalen Ray. Yeah, he's been seeing a lot of. Donny Hathaway in his face. Jalen Ray has some noise now from the Eureka crowd on this fourth and five. Eureka looking to bring some smoke. They're going to call Carey up actually to try to prevent this blitz from reaching Ray. Ten on the play clock. Ray's going to send Carey out wide. Dropping back, looking to get some pressure. Sidearm slings it. McIntosh inside the two. We have a completed and Rockford's going to have to hurry up to get up to the it line. It will be a first down for Rockford. It appears we have a timeout. They did have another timeout in their pocket. So, no timeout taken on that fourth down play last drive. Yeah. And no explanation <laughs> as of why there was nothing. But uh, timeout nevertheless. 36 seconds inside the five-yard line. The now they're going to mark him at the, the three. three yard line. 
on that play, Spencer, you saw Jalen Ray kind of move out of the pocket a little bit. And Coach Barth talked about this week. He drops his arm into some funky angles. Uh, not going to compare him to Patrick Mahomes because he's – How about Matt Stafford, Georgia boy? There we boy. go. We can do that. We can do that. I can do Matt Stafford, Georgia boy. But a little sidearm action there. And it was a bullet. Yeah. It was on the money. So he's really good at getting out of the pocket and kind of putting his arm into weird angles and fitting the ball in tight places. Now we'll see what they can dial up here again. No, now, actually, there actually are no timeouts for either team. I just don't know how to count, I guess. Uh, but 36 seconds left. Clock is going to move as long as the ball is in play, unless it gets dropped, of course. But we shall see. 21-0, Eureka up. As Rockford looks to get their first points on the board and keep it semi-close again, they get the ball after half. We're going to send three guys in motion. Again, formation needed death was the quote out of Coach Barth this week. We jet sweep, fakes it. Ray's going to run up the middle himself, met at the line, and he's still spinning around. It's Christian Miller ensuring he does not get into the end zone. And they're going to have to get up and get up there quick if they want to run another play. No timeouts, as we mentioned. Ray able to get his guys to the line. Nobody there to hand it off to. In the backfield, he finds his man, and a touchdown for Noah Jankovitz. Spencer, that was a broken play that Noah <laughs> went to turn around to hand it to his running back and he wasn't the there and <laughs> there were three guys <laughs> coming right at him one yard but touchdown pass tight end broke free was able to flip it over the line to him for a touchdown lemonade out of lemons on Jankovic. that play to say the least it looked dire <laughs> that on was, that play <laughs> that was pretty ugly <laughs> but if it works Ten it works seven points on the board attempting the point after kick is up and low but still sent through 21-7 now and Spencer we talked about this this is where the narrative the of this game could change yeah especially with Rockford getting the, the ball coming out in the second half seven. this game could go from a 21 point lead to a 7 point lead like that unless we see a play with like Coach Barth like Sean Payton and you know onside kick in week 3 to get the ball at half I know it's not the Super Bowl but <laughs> Sometimes you got to set the tone early in the season. Right, right. <laughs> and this is conference play. So, again, this is where the games really start to matter. Obviously, your non-con games do matter because that's where you're getting guys fired up, getting guys locked in. But conference games is where you start having a ring on the line. And you know Deep Coach Barth wants to add another one to his collection. Number two, He's to start filling Jack out those Butler. fingers. Get the Bill Russell going. Yep. And number 10, Billy Nelson. 12 seconds left, 21-7. Will likely be our first half score, number but again, anything can happen. You got some dangerous Tennessee return men back there with Jack Butler and Masio Williams. I believe this is Billy Nelson. I apologize. I've been misidentifying him the entire game. But he is the, the return, number, 10 number 10 playing Billy defense. Nelson. Yes, it was Billy Nelson. I apologize. On the play by number College game gets funky. Will you get two dudes Havens. with the same number out there. I apologize. That is Billy Nelson. He's been in coverage for pretty much the entire game. And I have uh, I sold the bag, to say the least. It happens. It does get confusing, especially wearing the same jersey. No last name on the back. Oh, yeah, that's part of it. Let's get some names on the back from now on or something. Five seconds left. I imagine this is just going to be a... Looks like it's just going to be a kneel down here, take it into halftime. Victory formation for the first half. <laughs> and Eureka will take a 21-7 lead into halftime. Levi, half. things have been going well. Things have been going well. The only thing is when seven. Eureka's defense comes out in the second half, they're going to have to play with some intensity. Time, and they've got to realize the that this game could change pretty quickly. 50 -50 At 21-7 again, Ben Burnaby with two rushing touchdowns. Caden Frazier with a touchdown to Jack Butler. And then the on the winner. other side, a touchdown from Jalen Ray to Noah Jankovic. It wasn't pretty, but it got the job done. 
No, it was not pretty a broken play, but the winning ticket again, if you put points on the board, it doesn't really matter how it looks, I guess. Three, seven, so we will step four, aside. 15 minutes. We've one, actually got an interview oh, with Mr. Two, college Field Quest himself, one, Josh two, Johnson, the in the house for this game, and we got a chance to talk to him at halftime. So that is coming up three, right after this. Seven, Welcome to Halftime. I'm Spencer Davis, joined by Levi Taylor. We've got a special guest coming on here, Mr. College Field Quest himself, Mr. Josh Johnson. Josh, how are you doing today? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. i uh ready to uh, go out there and see what's going on pregame with everybody and uh, excited to watch you guys uh, work the 3-0 this year. So explain to me just some background. How did you get into college football? Uh, how long have you been watching? Uh, are you from this area? So I'm actually from Homer, uh, over by Champaign. Um, Growing up, uh, my best friend was a Florida State football fan and didn't have a favorite college football team, so I asked who he uh, hated the most, <laughs> and it was Miami. So technically, I'm a Miami Hurricanes fan. That's when college football started, about about fourth or fifth grade. And then uh, last year, decided to start just uh, venturing off and watching other teams play that I might not have ever seen play and just uh, go on a quest to visit a whole bunch of different football fields. So... It was just a, a thing of like, wow, I, I really like college football. I just want to see different stadiums. Yeah, you know, uh, college football has a lot of different schools throughout the state and obviously every state. So it was kind of the one that I could see going to the most. I'm a big football fan in general. So that kind of took my interest of what can I see. And, you know, college players kind of play a different attitude in the game of NFL players. So it's fun to watch those kids play still. Yeah, and so I've seen that like it's expanded not just, and I know Soldier Field that you went to, it was a college game, but is that something you're looking to expand to potentially with NFL fields, or is it just more let's focus on college? If they're playing in a pro stadium, we'll go there. So, yeah, it's mostly mostly college games. I mean, I'm a huge Philadelphia Eagles fan, so, okay. you know. Good go, start. Go then. Birds, of course. <laughs> uh, but it's been uh, – I just want to see a lot of college football games on different fields. It just happened that I had a, that Saturday open and two teams were playing on Soldier Field, so figured kind of cheat the system because I can still go watch <laughs> them play a home game but also experience it on a, fo a pro field as well. So how does this process work? Are you Do you email like an AD or an SID or something before and just like, hey, I'm on my way. Uh, can I get access to like the field? And is that is that how this works? So when it originally started, it was – I was just doing it for fun, just on my own, uh -huh. and I made this social media on on Instagram, and it was got some messages from friends like, "Hey, we don't care what you're doing every single weekend. Stop posting." So I did it <laughs> just to grow on my own. So follow me if you want. Um, and then I went to a couple games where players started following me back on my personal or on my Instagram page, and a couple ads reached out because they saw the page like, "Hey, our players were really excited. We saw you're coming here. Would love to meet you." And from there, it was. Yeah, I think it was the fourth game, Western Kentucky, that I went to last year, where I was like, I should just email and see what I can do. What's it, worse they're going to say is, yeah, get lost. Yeah. And got some response like, yeah, we'll get you down on the field for a picture. And from there, I, I literally st staff directory and uh, email them all and tell them what I'm doing, send some pictures. And sometimes I get responses. Sometimes I don't get anything and just go to the game anyway. So you're just buying a ticket then if it's – they're not willing to give you a field pass then? Correct, correct. Okay. And I and honest honestly, I don't do it with the intent of getting anything for free. I decided to do this on my own. It just has had some perks of <laughs> thanks for picking our school. We'll absolutely take care of you. Sometimes it's we'll give you tickets, watch from the stands. Sometimes it's when you show up, let me know. We got you get we got you taken care of with clothes and tickets and sideline passes. And I've seen that you've got people pitching you in your Instagram comments of like, you got to come here because uh, I know Doak Walker's one that people have been pushing you to get down to. Uh, yeah, abs absolutely. There's a, it's fun when you wake up to a whole bunch of messages of, I posted this school I'm going to, and then it's, when are you coming down here? When are you going over here? Let us know. We'll take care of you. We'll give you the places to eat and watch from and everything. So it, it's, it's been way more exciting than I thought it was going. I knew the games would be fun. But the journey so far has been a, a, a crazy time. Yeah, kind of take me through how watching this kind of brand, in a sense, has developed. So you went from, like you said, you're posting, people are just like, all right, dude, like, come on now. 
But now we've got schools even reaching out to you, being like, hey, we would love for you to come to our, our school and just experience this. So, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the first, of course, I got on the field, like I said, at Western Kentucky of – yeah, I got a picture with Big Red, their mascot, who's the coolest little thing, whatever he is. <laughs> um, and then my buddy is a uh, Tennessee Volunteers fan, and he asked if we could go to that game, and it's Tennessee. They hold 111,000 fans. Like I reached out and didn't expect anything back, and the week that we were going to the game, one of their staff directory reached out and said uh, – let me know when you're here, and he took us on the field, so I'm sitting from me to you away from Hendon Hooker before he got hurt, who was the Heisman hopeful. And, uh, yeah, he kind of – that was that was a different quest. And then um been fortunate enough this year, I've been to three games, now four, and uh, watched from the sidelines of those, and it was uh, Tony Daniels down at Missouri hooked us up big time. He gave us a private tour the day after the game of all the athletic facilities. They got the new football – facility down there and uh to look up from a text message of hey look at the jumbotron and see your name at a big sec school like missouri of welcome college field quest with the guys that i was with that was that that was awesome that was a different experience that uh it's going to be going to be tough to match now i've <laughs> said that uh four different games now of i'm on tennessee before they smash kentucky uh it's going to be tough to match and then niu brought me down there and i watched with their athletic director the whole game so that was that. That was fun. Uh, different experience. So, do you have some that you're wish listing in terms of like, all right, this year I definitely want to try to get to these. Uh, so for this year, not really. Um, I'm going to Notre Dame USC game. Mm. So Notre Dame in general, but USC. <laughs> I mean, what, what what kind of game? You, you know, that's just going to be nuts in general. Yeah. Um, as far as wish list this year, I think that's probably the biggest game that left for the year that's uh scheduled but things hit and miss uh, i was talking to you over over instagram how uh i was actually going to be at notre dame this weekend but some things came up and then i was going to be at eureka later this year and it just ske- schedules hit and miss <laughs> um you know if if somebody happens to reach out and wants to connect and bring us down there or over here cool if uh if not yeah notre dame will probably be the biggest game left on the year i mean that's that's big of a game as you can get, I would say. I'm, I'm a Michigan fan, so obviously I was hoping to hear that you'd be getting to, a, like, the game, but, you know, I understand that that's a, <laughs> a hot ticket to get, to say the least. <laughs> that's fair. My, my buddy and I, who are here today, uh, we were talking on the way here, and I think the biggest goal throughout all this was to find a conference to hit every single school, mm-hmm. and obviously living in Central Illinois, the Big Ten's probably the, the easiest to hit, so Mi- Michigan's absolutely on that, on that list of uh, – games that I have to hit that that'll be I mean that's another hundred thousand plus crazy fans yelling yeah. that that that'll be and that that'll probably be one of those Ohio State games when they're in the house or somebody that will not win by 55 points or <laughs> in your case hopefully they do win by 55. I would love to beat Ohio State by 55. Levi you're a Georgia fan uh the Tennessee story how you feeling? <laughs> oh man I mean Tennessee's probably my least favorite team on planet earth but that is still a cool experience that you got to do that I mean no matter what school it is I mean if it was me and it was Tennessee I wouldn't wear any orange or anything but I would (laughs) take the opportunity so good on you for that um what's been the biggest difference between going to like these bigger division one schools SEC schools like you were talking about um versus going to like these small d3 schools like Eureka like I'm sure there's pros and cons to both, but which one would you prefer on a game day? I'm going to be honest, uh, not just because I'm sitting here with you guys. D3 is a different breed of, of players and atmosphere. I, uh, I was lucky enough last year to go to Aurora and went there for their game in the early mornings. I think it was an 11 o'clock game. And then across town to North Central, who won yeah. the D3 National Championship that mm-hmm. night. And it was it was awesome. Obviously, you guys don't hold – hundred thousand people, sixty thousand people, but <laughs> you guys, <laughs> you guys, you guys bring it. It's a, it's a fun atmosphere, and uh, you know, like I said, Aurora and North Central, the players have kept in touch. Even players that graduated last year or whatnot. I went to Franklin last weekend in Indiana to watch Aurora play again, 
And then uh, two weekends from now, I'm going to watch North Central play at Wheaton, who Ooh. are two top – again, that's yeah. who I watched them play last year, and that's two top 25 teams play. And uh, it's it's fun, and I uh, I told the, the coach from Aurora and all the players, like, you guys are some of the most humble people. I mean, it don't matter, D3, D1, NAIA, whatever. It's still college football. You guys are still smashing each other. And, uh, <laughs> you know, those, those players still reach out every week like oh where are you going this week and asking me about my quest when they're focusing on their next game and it's uh it's been fun so of course Kentucky and Tennessee last year with that many fans at the all black jerseys for the first time that was loud you're not going to match that atmosphere but in comparison to the school size it's it's pretty comparable if you can see the difference of you know 100,000 to 20,000 10,000 whatever it is yeah. So when you're going on these visits, is there like a specific like format that you try to follow? Is it like get there and then walk around the tailgates or how, how do you try to, what makes an ideal visit for you? Uh, depending on what it is, you know, not everybody tailgates the same. So I've been to a few that it was, where is the tailgate? <laughs> um, but I, I will say Fra- <laughs> Franklin last, last weekend surprised me when I had to walk, you know, a good 10 minutes from my parking spot to the field. I, I didn't expect that. So that was fun. I, I like to get there a couple hours early. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, win a drone last year on a on a raffle. So uh, I try to get there early enough to not distract the players and get up and fly and take some pictures from the from the tailgating and whatnot, um, and just soak it all in. I want to experience the whole whole surrounding. So I get that tailgate, and then uh, I'm a I'm a mascot guy. Okay. So I try to get there, and if a team's got a mascot, that's always that's always a big goal of mine. Enjoy the game, but find the mascot and take a picture with him or her, or like I said, Big Red, whatever that blob <laughs> is. Um, and then, yeah, just enjoy the game. Uh, I like to try to find the uh, student section or the other athletic department, uh, baseball, football, or yeah. basketball, football, um, and get a picture with them. If if there's a military thing, that is something I kind of – I'm not a mili- – I wasn't in the military. However, you know, if there's an ROTC or something, I try to get them – holding the sign so I can get a picture of them. And then I make a separate post of thanks for your service and all that. But that that's something that I enjoy trying to talk to them and they kind of enjoy as well. So Nice. And, and like, I think Eureka's got a pretty solid setup to get around. You know, you've got your tailgate semi close to the stadium. Um, and then I would say just, do you know about the traditions here? I don't. Okay. So I would say get there like 20 minutes before into the stadium uh, because they'll, all the guys will walk out. Uh, and then when they come back in, they're let out by motorcycles. They get motorcycles out on the field and just make a whole lot of noise. Um, so, like, that, if you, that's what the big thing is here. Um, and hopefully, I mean, obviously get to the stadium in time. But uh, the student section is pretty easy to find. They're, they're a loud bunch, and they like to have fun. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I absolutely go out there and try to uh, – I always try, like I said, talking earlier of take some pictures. I got a buddy that let me a pretty pretty decent camera, so get some of all the players and all that. But uh, – Get a, get some good videos, especially like you know if there's an interception or a touchdown, and post that. Players seem to like that a lot. If you get some good good different angles of them, but uh, yeah, go out there and make some loud noise and enjoy the motorcycles. That's awesome. So you've said Kentucky and Tennessee. That's probably probably your number one visit so far. What are your other two? Give me a top three. Um, so I know I said it before, but uh, Western Kentucky has a soft spot in my heart. Um, throw it back a little bit. Uh, when college football was a video game. Yeah. Uh, the last two years was when Western Kentucky was actually brought into that. So it was, I'm the guy that likes to, to put it nicely, <laughs> a lower seeding team and right. try to build them up in those games. Right. And it was those last two years. So my buddy and I have a soft spot for Western Kentucky. So, so the hooch, as they call it, was awesome. And I will say some of their players have stayed in touch. Tom Ellard, their punter, is – Australian and awesome. He reached out <laughs> all the time. Uh, Austin Reed, who led the nation in passing last year, is an, um, just an awesome human being. For somebody that leads the nation in passing and is humble as well. And his parents are awesome. They stay in touch. Um, so that would be one. Uh, Northern Illinois to watch a game from the sideline of a perspective that I got from there was awesome. Um, yeah. I, th- those are those are top three. I mean, again, those are hard to match just oh, yeah. because of the atmosphere in general. Missouri that I've already said. I mean, getting your name on a jumbotron again <laughs> at a big school. I don't care if it's 
you have 100 fans or 56,000 fans there, that atmosphere was cool. At one point, we got in so early because of our sideline passes. We were outside of the workers. We're the only people there, so we were on the field. I, I don't want to brag or anything, but I caught a touchdown. So you <laughs> I was know, gonna ask. Yeah. So yeah, I won't talk about the first one where my shoes slipped on the turf and I tumbled. Um, turf monster will get you. Uh, hey, absolutely. <laughs> so so Missouri is a different thing. I, I put aside because that's. I mean, it was an experience all on its own. So yeah, you know, Tennessee, Western Kentucky, Missouri, NIU for different reasons, of course. And that was Maction. That was my first Maction game on a Wednesday. So very nice. That was fun. Those those are all in the running for for the best experience so so far. Okay. Well, I don't want to hold you up too far. Take you away from your quest. Uh, should be a shootout. Levi and I have been game prepping, obviously. Uh, Rockford likes to throw the rock. We like to throw the rock a little bit, but it should be fun. It should be a really fun game. Awesome, man. I, I truly appreciate you guys letting me come in here and you know have this little interview. This is a first for me. So I appreciate it. Hopefully uh, I can use this to lead to some more. So I'll make sure to thank you guys all the time. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we have a a shootout and maybe uh, Eureka wins by 55. I would definitely take that. Uh, Real quick, do you want to plug your your platforms? Yeah, uh, Instagram is my main source. That's the easiest to uh, put everything together. Seems you can post the most. Uh, It is literally just College Field Quest um, on TikTok as well, College Field Quest. And my name on Facebook, Josh Johnson. For the first name, College Field Quest for the last name. So <laughs> so you'll see both of them for my personal and that. But if you want to follow along, I'd greatly appreciate it. Feel free to share. I always give everybody thank yous for follow backs and let me do things like this. So, yeah, just College Field Quest on social media. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on. Hope you enjoy the game. Uh, and best of luck for the rest of the season. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys.
We are underway here in the second half, Number getting ready to go. Eureka about to kick it away to Rockford. 21-7 here, as will be fielded by That's Rockford. Yeah, Bearden moving it up the field down On to the, the 30, 31. See if there's some extra uh, fire Tackle coming out of either of these teams. 21-7 our score, Benjamin Rockford. Smith. We're going to try to get back into this one. They went down 21-0, but then on their final drive of the half, they managed to punch one in. Well, like we said, Spencer, that could change the narrative in this game if they're able to put one, put another one in the end zone right here. It could make it a seven-point game. What well, once was a 21-point game. And really, to no fault of Eureka, it was a good defensive drive. It was just better offense, I guess, per se, on that. Well, when you get into those two-minute drills, it's, it gets hard to defend because you're going so quick and you've got so many things going on. It gets tough to defend. See how they do here. Ray hands off, Carey drops the shoulder, met by Chris Woods this time, brought down along with David Hill. Four, Jack Carey. Coming out Back of halftime, first play, play run play. Four, oh, Woods. expect that to change to say the least. <laughs> right, yeah. I expect to see a lot of Jalen Ray in the pocket, hopefully on his backside. But well, the way that Eureka's <laughs> putting pressure on today, I would not be surprised. Yeah, no kidding. Quiet half, Jose, again. Their leading receiver did not had an opportunity to catch a touchdown ball was just out of his reach. Looked like it could have been a hold there. Christian Miller took a while to get off of his block, On the carry, but brought down four, Jack Carey, Jack two yards carry. shy of a first down. Good gain on your uh, favorite play there, the first toss. I love it. <laughs> you love it. It's one of the few times I've ever seen a toss Ethan work. Ceramic. Man, toss plays. It will be third and third. That was short. really getting my craw. Third and short here. Empty set. Yeah, this is funny. Usually you see a third and two. You like to at least make the defense think you could run it. I mean, they could. Ray's a big guy. He's run it a couple of times, but probably seeing a pass play. He's going to drop back. Looks to fire to the sideline. It's a catch. And Russell down out of bounds. So we track that down on our roster. Makai Brown. It is a Makai Brown for Rockford. Tackle on the play Michael by Brown, excuse three, me. Garrett Wayne. This is on what happens four, when you start bringing in these six, five, five and six receiver Rockford. sets. You really start to have to struggle with this uh, roster. <laughs> Trying to track down everybody. Can't fit everyone in the game notes. Ray once again, empty set. Look at a fire. Will fire one down the field. McIntosh was just out of his reach. Oh my goodness gracious, Spencer. He was wide open. He had nobody. Sailed it completely over his head. He didn't really have to put that much into it. He was wide open. He yeah, was floated it out there, and he would have scored. That was thrown behind him. It looked like two McIntosh was on a post heading towards that little far side pylon, and that ball was way closer to the left hash marks on that throw. So miscommunication there, and not great execution from Jalen Ray on that throw. Maybe there was supposed to be a different route. I don't know. It just looked like that ball kind of sailed be. on him. Could be. Jack Carey in the backfield with Ray. Ray, quick pass out. Bearden in the flat. Looking to make a move and gets brought down. Looks like an eight-yard gain. Levi, Rockford's offense starting to move the ball a little bit. Yeah, they're starting to get things going. I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to use Eureka's aggressiveness against him. They're getting pressure on the quarterback. So by it will be combating that, they're trying to get the ball out quickly into space. And they're doing a good job of it so far in this half. Ray once again in the pistol. Three wide receivers out wide. Going to hand off, fakes the handoff instead. Jose trying to get by, gets to the sideline, lowers the shoulder, and does not get taken down, but is pushed out of bounds. Number 12. Well, Curtis Jose, statistically his favorite target so far Curtis this year. We haven't called his name too many times today, but a big down. chunk play right there. Get him down again, close to the red zone. He'll be just outside the red zone, about the 21 yard line. yard line. First and 10 for Rockford. Again, this is certainly the best drive and most consistent drive we've seen out of this Rockford offense so far today. They're, they're a good offense. They put up a lot of points consistently. Only seven points in that first half was a bit of a shock. And they're a second-half team, too. They're no strangers to playing from behind. Even late in games, they're coming out with wins. Because even in that first game that they lost to Beloit, it was a really close game that they almost came back and won. Ray.
Ray hands off. Carey moving left through his tackle and brought down. Number four. Like a five yard Jack gain. Carey. Four yard gain. Tackle on the play by number 34, Brendan Durr. And Spencer, you really just, this is not an offense that you want to get into there rhythm, and you don't want them to have traction be because with an experienced quarterback like this, when he Rockford. starts to get into his rhythm and get into where he's comfortable, he could be dangerous. Ball Second and seven the inside the red zone, line. Rockford is. Rockford's had a lot of deep drives, just it took a while for him to finally get some points. Block kick, a pick. Fakes the handoff, play action. Ray running right. Miller bringing the pressure on him. Incomplete pass. Well, Miller and Hathaway are two guys that, <laughs> again, we have said their name a, a bunch of times today, and we probably will all season long. Those guys just big time factors on the defensive, defensive line, putting pressure on, on Jalen Ray, making him roll out there, making an Number awkward throw, and ended up Christian hitting him at the end Miller. of the play. That was close, though, and a lot of times officials don't like it when you're diving at the quarterback's ankle. So fortunate, I wouldn't say fortunate, but definitely something where it's like, all right, let's be careful with that. Especially with the way they've been throwing flags today. No kidding. Personal fouls galore in that first half, and a timeout taken by Rockford. And that could be big. That could be big, especially, I mean, <laughs> this game's far from over, Spencer. You and I both know that anything can, anything can happen, especially in a situation like this. But taking a timeout there early could could be consequential later on in the later in the late stages of this game. Especially as a team that likes or doesn't mind playing from behind, it's a lot harder to come back in games when you know there's maybe two, three minutes left on the clock and you have one timeout, two timeouts left. Well, Spencer, we saw that they do a good job on that two-minute drill. They did a great job of it right before halftime. Really effective. Of course, they had the big play. Uh, coming down towards the end of that first half that really opened up that drive because it looked like at the beginning that Eureka was going to have him on a three and out. And a uh, big play on third down. Brought him down the I believe it was a third down. Drove him down the field, got a good chunk. But an offense that is starting to gain traction, starting to move its wheels a little bit, Eureka will have to come out and answer. Yeah, and this is a team that does not mind going for it on fourth down. They did it a few times in that first half. So even if Eureka can force a stop on this third and seven, nothing says that Jalen Ray and his guys don't stay out there for another down. Reset his formation. Ten seconds on the play clock. Carry in motion. Ray fires in the middle. It's a good tackle there by Jack Arnett. Brought in reception. by Bearden. Well, Number when you've got those little screens reception, going across the middle, Timothy as a receiver, Bearden. you're expecting to get clobbered, especially <laughs> if there's a linebacker <laughs> sitting there waiting for you. It's going to be a fourth and, and short fourth situation here. It's a good ball by Jalen, put it right in his chest. For Rockford, fourth and one. Well, on right there the to make the tackle, make it fourth and short here. The Red Devils. First Help opportunity for the crowd to Red get into Devils it in the defense. second half. And a big play here for Rockford. Three men in motion. Carey moving further up. Ray resetting. Four on the game clock. Or excuse me, play clock. Hands off. Carey up the middle. Carey with the first down. And it inside the 10-yard line now. For number four, Short Jack yardage situation. Carey. Just give it to your back and let them work. That's exactly Brandon what he did. Offensive line opened up some holes. As you said, this is an experienced offensive line. Number five, David Hill. And especially when you're expecting Rockford first to throw the ball down nearly every down, even on a first and or a fourth and line. one, you still got to respect the throw. And with Eureka only having three down linemen on every down, it makes things difficult. Here's Ray on the rollout. Ray loses it, and it comes out at the we end. I think he was. On the play. Oh. They're going to rule it Eureka football. I don't know if I <laughs> I don't know about that one, Levi. Spencer, that was a very funky play. He did start to lose it while he was up. Yes. But it looked like he regained possession as he went down to the ground. And it was knocked out of his hands. It looked like he was on his back. But hey, Eureka football, no review. <laughs> we'll take it. No New York. No New York to worry about today. But wow. Oh. That was, uh, that was an interesting call. I'd hate to call it a makeup call. Yeah, I, I don't. But uh, they've missed a few calls going uh, our way. Yeah, that's a pretty 
game-changing call, though, to say the least, inside the 10-yard line. Wow. I c okay. All right. Nothing is it. <laughs> Donnie Hathaway, the forced fumble. And Eureka gets the ball. Quick fire throw over the head of Butler. Incomplete pass. Newman's shoulder pad Incomplete sticking out of his jersey. I don't know how that's not a grab on something. That was, a, that was an interesting play there, Spencer. I'm not really sure what they wanted to have going. It looked like Butler was going to have space all the way down the field, and I think Second and Frazier saw that and tried seven. to get it to him quick, but might have been a little bit of miscommunication. It looked like Butler was running something different. Yeah, it definitely looked like one of those quick-fire passes. Nobody was really on Butler. There's a safety moving out behind. It's Burnaby in the backfield. He will get it. Burnaby moving gets tripped Number up from behind. Four like four yard gain for the senior. The third and manageable, to say the least. Ben well, like we said, trying to establish run play. They're going to try to do it here in the second half, too. I mean, the game plan hasn't changed for them. It, it's been working. And they're going to keep going back to the well with Burnaby and Deloach. Yeah, I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Excuse me, that was a six-yard gain. I apologize. Burnaby getting his guys to a third and four. Frazier in the backfield. Low snap, catches it one-handed, fires across the middle, and it's picked off. An excellent an catch by Napoleon Williams. Zero Napoleon Perfect. I mean, he Williams. ran that route better than Napoleon Eureka did. Williams. Yeah, that was a great Zero defensive play. I, on the interception Napoleon Williams on the play Regents. there. Looked like, I, I don't know, Spencer, I just didn't see an opening there. I think he had pressure uh, getting to him. Just had to get rid of it quickly and maybe made a, uh, a premature mistake there. So Eureka, after the gift of the fumble recovery, gives it right back to Rockford in plus territory for the Rockford offense. And we'll see if that, uh, the fumble, we'll call it. Oh, we will call it. That's what it was registered as, the fumble. Uh, controversy or not, Rockford has an opportunity to respond and get some, get some momentum back on their side. Well, this could be one of those situations, you know, Spencer, they say ball don't mm -hmm. lie. Mm -hmm. Could be one of those situations we're seeing here. Rockford gets the ball back almost in the red zone and uh, new life. You know, momentum just being shifted back and forth in this game right now. Carry on the run. Carry looking to bounce inside. It's on like a three-yard gain for Carry. Do you remember back in uh, college carry. football, the video game, there used to be a momentum bar. And your guys would play better Game depending on how that momentum would shift. And, you know, your screen would get all shaky and stuff. And you couldn't really see your plays. You could almost feel seven. the momentum bar all the way on the side of Eureka after that fumble. It moved a pretty significant chunk over to Rockford. I'm not going to say it's Rockford's side yet, but it's certainly not 100%. Touchdown here could change things drastically. Ray's going to move it himself. Ray up the middle of the field. He's going to slide down. Kind of dive slide. A little awkward there. One, Jalen Ray. And again, that's something you talked about. He's a guy that, like, he's a bigger quarterback. He's a hard the guy to take down. down, and he's not afraid to rumble if he needs to. No, he's college. he's athletic, and he's it sneaky athletic because looking at him, you wouldn't think, okay, this guy's not going to run on us. But he will. He will run on you, and that's what opens a lot of things up for them is because we've seen plenty of times they run that read option. He gets out running, and then he throws a quick screen pass. And that's not something that you see a whole lot in football. I definitely haven't seen it before today. <laughs> They're but inventing plays over at Rockford. <laughs> It's working for it him is. Is, is the thing, starting to at least. McIntosh in motion, fakes the handoff. Ray looking to go to his man, Jose. Jose over his head. Incomplete a good no call there. And just making a play on the ball there. You can't call anything there. Eureka had that thing Curtis sniffed out from Hosea. the start. Didn't fall for the play action. It'll be fourth and one. That was really the only option that he had was Jose. Everybody else was pretty much bottled up. Yeah, and you can tell that was – exactly what the play was designed for. I think they're probably the hoping that Eureka doesn't smell Eureka that as well as they did. College. Fourth and one. Another big play. Again, this is a no-fear type go, of offense and, and game plan. Rockford's ready to punch you in the mouth on fourth down. Pistol set once again. Ray followed by Carey in the backfield. Ray fakes the handoff. Miller getting in the backfield. Ball goes up and it's picked off. Austin Hopkins looking to do it himself. He's getting chased down. Jose Hopkins still running and he's down at the 35. Christian Miller once again getting pressure on the quarterback. And, uh, you know, 
kind of an Number inexperienced play by the quarterback there. The Usually, you just want to take the set. But I mean, Austin on fourth down there, Hopkins. either way, it's going to the other team. The but usually there, you see him take the sack. Hey, Illinois. don't turn it over. Don't throw a stupid Austin pass. Hopkins Get it intercepted. The but right there on fourth down, either way, you know you got to make a play. Probably why we saw him throw the ball there. And it might have been one of those instances. Miller looked like he might have grabbed him on the shoulder when he was trying to throw. Obviously, he's trying to tackle him. But maybe that jersey tug at the very end just kind of resulted in the, the ball just kind of flipped up in the air rather than thrown. Austin Hopkins definitely wanted to crib it, but take the ball in plus territory at the 37, 38-yard line. Frazier going to hand off Deloche. Deloche with a nice cut. Deloche trying to get a first down. He's really close. That's definitely going to get him there after the push. On the Again, great read by Deloche there. That play was designed to go to the outside, and he saw the containment by the Rockford defense. He bounced Tackle it up the middle, took it up the gut, first down inside the 30. Now it looks like going to be around the 26, 27-yard line. I want to say that was an excellent block in the backfield by Burnaby. There was some heat coming off the edge by Rockford. Burnaby with a nice block, and that really sprung Deloche up the middle. But it's been, like you said, the offensive line for Eureka has been excellent today. Outside of a couple hits Frazier's taken, the run game's been good, to say the least. Frazier in the gun. Three out wide. Burnaby the up back. Deloche faking the handoff. Frazier looking to go long towards the end zone. It's Hill, and that one's picked off as well. Looking to return down the sideline. Benninger will On show him out of bounds. Interception. It's number eight, Reginald Jones. Reginald Jr. Jones with a pick, and man, Levi. Jones <laughs> neither team Jr. really wants the ball on offense right now, it seems. Well, I'm Rockford. not really sure that he saw the defensive back lurking over the top there. I think he just saw Seabass one on one, but came over, read, read his eyes, came over, made the interception. We got a flag down, though, Spencer. I'm not sure what this is about yet. Maybe on the return, could have yeah. been a holding block in the back, something like that. Looks like block in the back is We've the got signal. A penalty on Rockford. But man, that's a couple of missed opportunities for the Eureka offense. Unable to capitalize. And that was something we talked about in the first half, was Eureka's offense has really done a good job of capitalizing off of what the defense was giving them. Unable to do so so far in the second half. Coach Barth coming into this week talked about having to limit the turnovers. And we're seeing right now, Two straight interceptions. This could play a big factor on this game. Not taking opportunities that you've been given to put points on the board and really create some separation in this game. Rockford just giving, you just keep giving them opportunities to get back into it. We got to put them away at some point, Spencer. 6:50 left in the third. Eureka holding a 14-point lead. Jalen Ray back on the field. Here's Jack Carey up the middle. Fair with a nice Perry. run, getting it up to the 21-yard line. Boy, I tell you what, Spencer, he's starting to have some successful Tackle runs. He's starting to gain more and more yardage the more they hand it to him. Hopkins, Maybe starting to see 17. some fatigue by this defense being on the field so much. There was a gain of six yards. It'll be second and four. That David Hill stretching out on the sideline right now. Ray back in the shotgun. Quick pass out, Bearden. Bearden trying to get a block on the edge, and that will be on a first down. Number 82, Timothy Bearden. Again, Rockford started to move the ball it is pretty much immediately out of halftime. It looks like a different offense. Right, like we said, Spencer, they're starting to gain traction, gain wheels. They just haven't been able to put points on the board ball yet this half. But the, yard line. they're having success. Quick fire once again. This is Maurice Williams pushed out of bounds at the 32. Maurice Williams. And that's also part of it. This offense is chipping away, and the clock is kind of stopping. And with one timeout already used, you know you're kind of buying yourself some time early on in the half. Second and seven for Rockford. Ray, another quick pass out in the flat. This time it's Bearden. Bearden trying to juke up the field. Going to be close to a first down. They will give it to him. Jack Arnett on the tackle. Timothy well, they're just going to keep. Swinging and screening their way down the field, Spencer. That's what they've been. That's what they've been good at. And then every once in a while, you hand it off to your running back, Jack Carey. And like we said earlier, he's starting to gain some traction too, and gain some more yards as uh, as we go here in the second half. After the first down, the ball is at the 39. Jose, the man in motion, hand off, Carey. Carry met by Dean Saba. Number four. Wrestle down Jack for, after Perry. a three yard gain. 
Well, Dean Sabah, the Arabian Tackle bull, as they called him in pregame. That's a big guy. And uh, he takes a lot of space, Spencer. And he's going to get a lot of tackles, a great tackle there by coming up on, on the run play. Yeah, he's been one of those run stuffers, doing a good job of bottling carry up in that first half. Ray, quick pass again. This is Key. Key moving up the field. And Hansen gets on dropped, but it's Brennan Durr finishing off the plate. William it's going to be a third and one. Number 34, Brendan Durr on the tackle. Durr fresh off of a NACC Defensive Player of the Week and one after 13 Rockford tackles, a forced fumble, and a game ceiling line. sack at Greenville last week. Ray, another quick pass into the flat. McIntosh shaking a couple guys and then on the slips. And you know, like we two, say that turf is always better, McIntosh especially when it comes to rain. It's not as muddy. Uh, the grass isn't, Rockford, you know, slippery and sliding. Turf gets wet. Sometimes the cleats don't stick in as well. Yeah, yeah, it does get slippery at times. I can tell you from playing baseball, even when we play on some turf fields, it can get slippery out there. And uh, we, we've seen some guys kind of sliding around today, but you're not dealing with as much mud as you would be as with natural uh, grass. And uh, going back to Brendan Durr, talking about him winning Player of the Week, Coach Barr said, I'm surprised he hasn't won one before. Uh, just a great guy to have on this defense, great leader, great student athlete, great guy on and off the field. Ray's going to drop back, pressure in his face again, but he finds Maurice Williams. Maurice Williams trying to cut up towards the sideline. He's going up the middle of the field, trying to get a block, and he's brought Number down inside the 10-yard line, about the 6-yard line. And that was a really similar play to Sebastian Hill in week one where he Jack catches the ball on the, the left side of the field the and kind of just starts weaving his, his way up towards the middle. Good tackle there from Arnett. They picked up the blitz really the well there and was able to get the, the slant pass, and that's what sprung him. Ray quickly up to the line. Quick pass once again, Bearden. Malik Jones with a All nice the tackle there. I think what we're starting to see, Spencer, is they're, they are starting to use Eureka's aggressiveness against mm -hmm. them. Saw the blitz. That's a perfect play against the blitz, a little slant pass, because you got nobody there, because everybody's coming up trying to get the quarterback. Three minutes Second to go in the third quarter. On the seven yard line. It's been an exciting game so far and Rockford hoping for some more fireworks on their side. Ray going to hand off, carry up the middle, and carry into the end zone, 21-13. It was number four, Jack Carey. Well, Spencer, we're going to get a flag, I think. It looked like Carey Rockford said something here. to yeah, the think, student section. I think there were some words being exchanged, and the student section is going to let him know that uh, he just cost his team some yards. But Rockford right back into this game, like we said, Spencer. Yep. That's how you know your student section's doing your their job, though. Oh, we got it's a hard, great student section. It's hard Love to kick out like students. That. It is not difficult to throw flags on players. <laughs> Especially when the play when the students can kind of just chirp you all game right in your I ear in the end zone. We have the field is a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense number four. The style being forced on the kickoff. This is number four's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. That'll be uh, probably means good field position for the Eureka offense. Obviously, we've got the extra point coming up. Eight-point lead at the moment for Eureka. They have blocked a kick earlier in the game. We'll see if they'll do the same on the extra point. Field goal, or excuse me, PAT is up and good. The kick is good by Seven number Seven point lead now for Eureka. Caden well, we'll see how the staff. offense comes out and answers, and we'll see how and the, the play calling adjusts with Caden Frazier throwing it's two Eureka interceptions College on two straight drives. See if they the lean Rock on the run a little bit more. Well, this is a crucial drive for this offense. Yeah, this is a, a drive that you need to put points up because, again, Rockford, we talked about it, getting that touchdown at the end of the first half. They get the ball back. Obviously, that ended in a turnover, and then <laughs> Eureka turned it over and then Rockford turned it over, and then we turned it over, and then they turned that into points. Right, a sloppy start to the second half. <laughs> Again, and the first half was sloppy because right, of flags. First half was sloppy because of penalties. Second half has been sloppy because of turnovers. But Rockford's right back into this game, down seven points. This defense has had an answer for number this two, offense the last Jack few drives, Butler, been able to pick off Caden Frazier a couple times, made some good reads. 
because of the unsportsmanlike time. Kicking off from their own 20. Rockford. Again, likely means from decent field position to start this Rockford. drive. Butler and Nelson back to return. and a stad to kick things off. He'll send it down to Butler. <laughs> Butler looking to weave his way through and brought down at Number the 41-yard line. Jack Again, good Butler. field position. You were expecting it after the penalty. Up to about the that last drive, Levi, what, what have Rockford been doing differently? Have Rockford they been doing the anything differently in this half? 43, no, they haven't Joey really been doing much differently. Oh. I just think it's starting to work. <laughs> and uh, Eureka's started to make some mistakes. Maybe got comfortable with the lead, maybe something like that. But Rockford starting to capitalize on Eureka's mistakes. Eureka, I'd like to see them come out here and establish the run game some more because it's, it's been so successful. Frazier hands off Burnaby, looking to do exactly what he said, able to get, bounce it to the outside, takes a Number shot there and goes four, down to the 44. Ben Burnaby on the carry. He is up well, to for the a big guy, Ben Burnaby does a great job bouncing it to the outside three. and creating extending the play yeah Back and uh, the right play, there it looked like he wasn't going to really have anything but Chabrin was able to bounce to the outside Booker. and get two yards at least yeah it looked Second more positive than it seven. ended up being he, he looked like he might lose yardage so making something out of nothing on that at least so second and eight seven point lead intact for eureka though that lead has dwindled in the last couple of drives burnaby once again Looking to get around his tackle, able to do so on a first down ben for the senior. Burnaby Great blocking all around on the, by the Eureka the offense. Devils. Receivers did a good job blocking. The line did a good tackle job blocking. And Ben Burnaby, of course, you give him space. He's, he's going to take it. He's going to be running ben for a while. He's also able to make his own space. It seems like he's bouncing these out on Rockford. plays that are probably supposed to be running through the guards and the tackles and, you know, getting those edge blocks from his receivers and making – Making some positive plays, to say the least. Frazier in the shotgun, minute 40 left in the third quarter. Frazier looking to pass. It's going to go long down the field. Glover there brings it in, and it's punched out. And Hill will pick it up. I don't think he would have been able to advance it anyway. But, wow. There was Almost another costly mistake by this Eureka offense being a little bit careless with the football. But Jacoby Deloche picked up a block in the backfield yeah. there. Uh, great job by the freshman. You know, as a freshman, you might see blocking struggle a little bit because in, in high school, he's getting most of the, he's getting <laughs> most of the carries. So On the as a freshman, you might see him struggle to block a little bit, but a great job picking up that block there. First and ten for Eureka. First down just outside the red zone. Deloche in the backfield still. Frazier will hand it off to him. Deloche cutting up the middle of the field, shakes a couple of tacklers and brought down. Be close to a first down. Going to mark him a yard short. By number 95, well, this offensive line Jim continuing Thor to do Bradley a great job Jr. in opening up spaces and running lanes for these running the backs. Ball is inside and like the I said, Spencer, the running game remains two. effective. This might be the last play of the quarter. Might have time for one more depending on where this one goes. Frazier flanked by Deloche and Townsend in the backfield. He's got Newman Butler in motion. Hill split out on the left side still. Frazier hands off to Loesch. Deloche bottled up in the backfield there, trying to fall forward, still on his feet. Zero, he is a tough guy to take down, Levi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, 5'11", 215, I believe, Tackle 205 maybe. Still, Chancellor big Bradley guy, Jr. hard guy to take down. And that's going to take us to the end of the, of the third, third quarter, quarter, Spencer. It is 21 to 14. We will take a little bit of a break. We will be right back for the start of the fourth quarter. Eureka 21, Rockford 14.
Welcome to the fourth quarter, 21-14 our score here in Eureka, Illinois. Opening week of the NACC Conference for football here in week three. Eureka offense driving third and four inside the red zone, some movement. And Sebastian Hill's wide open in the end zone. <laughs> False start. False start though. Five yard penalty, and down. Third and nine after the it false start. Third down. Levi, mean, not what you want to see. No, that's not what you want to see. A third and manageable penalty backs you up to the third and long situation. Third and Caden Frazier gets a call from Sam Durley, and he'll go into the huddle to communicate it with the team. I think another thing that's been really effective for both teams, we've seen it every once in a while is the hurry up. Hurry up's been effective for both teams this time. Eureka huddling, so it's a third and ten. Frazier in the shotgun, dropping back, looking to go. He's got pressure. He's just going to chuck it out of bounds. It's going to be fourth and ten They're calling for, for Eureka grounding. College. Eureka, or it's going to be a flag thrown for grounding. Was not outside of the tackle box, and it did not reach the line of scrimmage. Intentional grounding. Offense number three. Fourth down. So that is going to take, we'll see if that takes Eureka out of field goal distance. This is going to be a bomb if they decide to kick this. Steve's a guy that, Steve Barkis, the kicker, is somebody that can punt as well. We'll see. They're, they're going to ship Sam Bartles out. I was going to say, Spencer, you're looking at a 60-yard <laughs> field goal, 41-yard line. And nothing Getting against Steve Barkas, but I think his career long is like eight, 38 maybe. And some confusion here. Looks like a timeout. Maybe. Yes. Yes. I would assume it was Eureka that took it. I'm not sure. That's a costly grounding play there, Levi. That uh, takes you out of field goal range. That is a costly penalty. Cur uh, Coach Barth did not agree with the call, <laughs> but unfortunately, here we are. Can't do anything about it now. Um, well, we can assume that Rockford did not agree with the fumble call. Correct. Right. <laughs> so. Right. There have been some, <laughs> some controversy <laughs> here in the second half. But... Uh, Seven-point game, just the start of the fourth quarter. Rockford's getting the ball back. Hopefully we can pin them deep here. Yeah, and Rockford's had the momentum the entire second half. Eureka really, outside of that drive where they got inside the 20, there's not been a lot of positive play from the offense. couple of picks. Number 98. We'll Sam see what Sam Bartles, Bartles can do. Well, interceptions and, and penalties, just that's undisciplined mistakes that you're shooting yourself in the foot. And a fire one away near the sideline. And Kirby That's out of bounds. That's a great punt. Now yeah, we'll see where they mark this. This is going to be inside the 10 yard line. By Sam wow. Bartles. Sam Bartles the putting it at the three. Great punt He's fired up Sam coming off the field on that one. Well, I mean, he should be. That's, that's a big play there, especially, you know, they're going to try to drive and tie the game here. Pinning them deep makes it tough. What do we have going on here? We do have a penalty on the play. Laundry once again. I really don't know what they're going to call in this. Uh, Legal formation, kicking team, more than backfield. Well, you can five wipe away that punt. Previous spot. Replay and illegal formation down. on Eureka. That'll back him up even further. Five yard penalty, put him at the 46. But unfortunately. Spencer, that great punt is the just wiped away. Now nah, we're going to have to do it again. I believe in Sam, to say the least. I, be I believe Sam that he can do it again, but for it's certainly college. frustrating. That's another penalty that wipes out a good play by Eureka. I'll see what Bartles does a second time. It's a quicker one. He's going to boot it also towards the sideline. That one will bounce out of bounds close to the 20-yard line. 
They will mark it as such. Ball is going to be on well, about Spencer, the 20 yard Spencer, we talked line earlier about Rockford, Rockford starting to get some things to go. Over first and, and now ten. it's become a case of Rockford's not necessarily getting things to go. Eureka's just shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, it's going to be a big defensive play. The defense was phenomenal throughout the entire first half. They obviously gave up the touchdown. Uh, but dealt with the adversity on the first couple drives. A lot of you know penalties were called on them. Still didn't give up points. But now they've... They've gotten punched in the mouth in the second half. Also, not to say that they haven't done well. They've gotten takeaways as well. They have, but Rockford's starting to find some gaps. A little bit of a weird formation here. Had two wide receivers out wide, a couple tight ends on the line. Ray in the shotgun, carry next to him. Carry will carry it. And nothing going on that play. Number that feels four, a lot more like that first half run carries. defense. Yeah, that looks a little bit more familiar, that <laughs> defensive line making a stop there. No gain on the rush. The ball is on Second the 20-yard line. Basically no gain on the play. It will be second and ten for Rockford. Fourteen and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. A little confusion on the defensive side for Eureka. Arnett and Wayne having a conversation, I imagine, right now, deciding on where the coverage is going to be at. Ray going to fake the handoff, keep it himself. Ray gets cut on down. Six-yard gain for the Jaylen quarterback, Jalen Ray. On the carry. Well, well, I'll be honest. I don't remember. You know, Jalen Ray had seven attempts coming into this game, and I think he's had more than that he's, today. He's had he's quite he's had quite a few attempts. Feels like, anyways, than that in this game. I don't have any stats here with me uh, in the first half, but um, I'm sure that he's he's up over seven now. And some of it has been less of designed runs for him. He's had a couple where he just kind of went off on his own. Pressure in the backfield led to it. He's going to pull it back here. He's going to fire long down the field. And a wide open McIntosh. And nobody is going to catch him pulling away. On the reception. And Levi, that is not what you want to see as a Eureka fan. Nope. That is not what you want to see at all. I mean, he blew right by our guys. There was nobody there. Just left everybody behind him. And when you get a ball to a guy like that, he's got space like that. I mean, you're not going to catch him. And now, Eureka's mistakes starting to, to stack up against him a little bit. Getting ready to attempt the point after number 83. And with the offense coming back on the field, Spencer, you got to think they're going to be a little bit desperate to get some yards here and get something going after a frustrating start to this half. Low kick is through. The kick and we is have a tie game at 21. I don't stand. think if you had told us and the score, Eureka after, you know, four minutes left in the first half, we would have been Rockford like, Region, oh, yeah, totally. 21. It's going to be 21-21 in the fourth quarter. Oh, I would have told you you were crazy. A scoreless third quarter from the offense. And you can't expect your defense to just continue to make stops like that after turnover after turnover. But it's going to be a big test for the offense. Because, again, like, you know, we talked to Coach Park during the week. Like, it feels like our offense is doing enough for us to win games. This is going to have to be you are good enough to win games. This is a tough conference. You've got some good teams coming up. St. Norbert's going to be a difficult opponent here at home. And Aurora certainly is going to be a difficult opponent on the road. Yeah, Aurora, a really good team. A team that gave the Devils plenty of fits last year. we got to play them up there this year. It's going to be a tough one on the road. But right now, this is a test to this offense. Yeah. This is a test to their quarterback. This is, this, they're really be back against the wall. Okay, let's see what you really got in a game where you've got to make, you can't make mistakes. You can't make mistakes. You got to be sharp. You got to be on point. This will be booted away, and it's going to go out of bounds. I think Spencer. Yeah, that's going to be ball at the what 40 yard line, 30, I believe. 35, 35 yard line. All right. So another opportunity with good field position for Eureka. Kick out of bounds, kicking team number 83. Ball be placed So we'll see what Eureka has in store for us. Again, it was inside the, yeah, Eureka <laughs> broke huddle and ball is, yeah, way up there. 
I was a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> they were lined up like the ball was going to be placed on the, ball on the will be 20. Placed on the 35 but it will be placed on the 35. And 10, Eureka College. Both teams a little confused there. Happens to the best of us. You know, sometimes it's Saturday. But a big, big drive ahead of the Eureka offense. Frazier going to quick fire. And I thought Hill, I think did the ball get knocked down the at the line. The ball did get batted down at the line. They had a, they had a surge. Got a hand up, a passing lane. On the but I mean, pass, if he would have got that ball to Hill. Well, I don't think he would have because I think Hill, Hill got held. Still on the oh, did he? Hill was, Hill was looking for a flag because his jersey was extended. I don't, I thought that was a flag coming to be honest, but you know. There was not. Second and ten. Ball in the 35. Eureka in a tie game at 21. Frazier hands off. Burnaby with a draw. Plenty of room. Burnaby looking to cook up the field. Burnaby absorbing some contact on the sideline. Still going. Ben Burnaby chased down number at the 11. Four, ben the senior said, ben Burnaby, okay, it's my time. Big hole by the offensive it line, first off. That was just a simple draw play there, the Spencer. Devils. And they just opened up a wide open gap, and Burnaby took the lane. And he's a hard guy to bring down, Spencer. We saw that right there. Nobody could bring him down. He rumbled all the way down inside the 15-yard line. That's a big play for this offense. Get some momentum back. Hopefully can capitalize here and put some points on the board. I say hopefully because, of course, <laughs> up here we are Eureka football fans. Right, right now. Line of <laughs> Sorry to any Rockford fans First that are listening out there, but Eureka this is a biased cast. Hopefully it's not unbearable. We're trying to do our best. Frazier hands off Deloche. Deloche to the edge. Trying to bounce it inside. He's getting close to the pylon and brought down. Jacoby Deloche on the carry. Back to back runs by this Greek offense have been successful. Line. And as we said, Spencer, the run game has been the best part of their offense today. And it continues to be it so. Is second and one for Eureka College. Second and one. Second and one. At the four on yard, the three line. yard line of Rockford. Deloche still out there with Frazier. And I know you want. Jacoby Deloche to keep this rushing touchdown race close between this Eureka backfield. We'll see what he can do. Frazier in the gun. Hands off. Deloche. Deloche bottled up. And that's definitely Jacoby been the best push Deloche, the that Rockford's had all game in the backfield. They've had good plays, but I believe that's the most negative the play that they've had on a run play. Line. Yeah, we haven't really seen him get a push quite Back like that in this game. I mean, everybody was swarming in the backfield Brenton. on that one. Stood him up. Stood to low up and unfortunately unable to get in for the touchdown. On the, the third and one line. now, or thir third and three, third excuse me. And about three. We'll see what Eureka does. Big play coming up. Frazier snaps, hands off. Burnaby getting a block from Townsend, trying to get to the outside and will not do Number so. Four, and a big Burnaby decision for Coach Barth. Well, Rockford, down Rockford uh, right dug in there and said, let's get some pride back after they just gashed us a couple times. Made a good stand on a couple run plays there. They are going to kick this one. I believe that is a smart idea. The ball is back Put to some about points the on the board after you've been line. unable to do so so far in the second half. Number 87, Stephen Barkus. Yeah, that drive. He will be kicking from the 14-yard line. Certainly benefited a from a huge Ben Burnaby run. Attempt. Here's Barkus. Barkus, his kick is blocked, and it's picked up. And Napoleon Williams is going to return this to the house. I cannot believe this. Napoleon Longer Williams. Return. Zero Napoleon Williams. This game has been completely turned Zero around in an instant, return. Spencer. That play changes things drastically. A 97-yard block kick return for Napoleon Williams to put his guys in front. Spencer, I think that Eureka might have forgot that after you block a field goal, the ball is live. Looked like our guys kind of froze there. They just scooped it up and ran it the whole way back, and there was nobody stopping them. Well, we've got ourselves a ball game, folks. This game had a little bit of everything. Fumbles, interceptions. We've got a block kick for a touchdown. Reek is going to run a guy on late here. Finistad's extra point is up and good. 
And this game has swung completely for Rock for 28 unanswered points now. With 10.38 left, this is going to be a, a if last drive wasn't big for the Eureka offense, like, th this is the drive. <laughs> this is the drive. Uh, trailing in this game, like we said, Rockford is a team that plays from behind, and they're comfortable doing that. And they're a second-half team, and they've shown it here. Scored 21 points in this second half. And that's as many as Eureka had in the first half. They had 21 in the first half and still haven't put any on the board here in the second half. Yeah, and I don't want to say that it's it's luck to get a block kick return for a touchdown uh, because, you know, that takes a lot of skill to block a kick A. But a fortunate bounce, the football kind of bounces wherever it wants to. Uh, but a fortunate bounce and then returning it to the crib. Wow. 28 unanswered points. 21 of them have been in the third half. Or it's third half, wow. Just one of those days, you know? Yep. Second half. <laughs> Plenty of scoring for all the people involved. A lot more than I think we expected after that first quarter. This is where maturity is going to become a factor on this Eureka team. As we've mentioned, we've got so many senior leaders on both sides of the football. But now it's time for those guys to step up. Okay, this is where this is where you encourage your guys. This is where we're gonna get another kick out of bounds here, Spencer. Ball's gonna be on 35 again. So another good chance for field position. Fortunate <laughs> enough, we've got decent field position starting again. But this is where your guys, your seniors, you look to to say, uh, okay, keep us steady, keep us grounded here, help us not to lose our heads. And uh, those seniors are gonna have to step up in big ways right now, being down seven after. Well, we're we'll just up 14 at halftime. First and 10, Eureka College. Good toss from the official over there, we'll say. So it'll be first and 10 at the 35 yard line. A little bit of confusion on the Eureka set. Nobody beyond five yards. Ball is loose, ball on the ground. And I, We've got a Rockford that comes up with it. And a costly a turnover there. As Rockford now with an opportunity number to potentially 90, go up 14. Spencer, I'm not sure that that was, it wasn't a perfect snap, but I thought it was Rockford. a playable snap. It looked like Burnaby and... Frazier went for it at the same time, and there was just some confusion, and the ball got loose, and Rockford falls on top of it, and great field position for them to tack on more points to their lead. Rockford, wow, wow. <laughs> what a span. Rockford now with a chance to really make their mark on this game as if they haven't already. 97-yard kick return. Not too bad day at the office. Carey pushing through up the middle, and he's going to be close to a first down. They mark him just short. Number four, well, we talked Carey. about that momentum meter has completely Michael shifted the other way. The crowd has been silenced. Christian I can't blame them. The fans, the the fans are stunned, as are we, as I'm sure everybody here is. Rockford's going to try to capitalize on that while they have the momentum in their favor on the road here. Under 10 minutes to go. Second and one. Ray takes the snap, hands off. Carry once again, room to run, and a first We've down. A first down carry by number four, Jack Carey. Tackle number 34, this is, uh, again, this is a big moment. That's where you find out a lot about your team. Senior Eureka. leadership in need. First There's going to be other guys Rockford. that are not seniors that are going to have to step up, I presume. In a game like this, nine and a half minutes left. Rockford now in the red zone. This could be the wake-up call that this team needed, though. Coming in 2-0, and oh, might think you got everything together until something like this happens. Everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. And Rockford came to punch in this second <laughs> Yeah, they did. <laughs> Carl Jones to the edge and not quite able to get all the way around. Got a flag in the backfield. Might be a hold Carl here. Jones. 
Holding call would go a long way here. Number 34. Hold. Offense number 75. There will be a hold. This will back the offense up 10 yards. Yeah, they call it on Paul Monreal. That'll take the ball outside of the red zone now. But again, this has been four down territory. Rockford's been playing to go for it on every fourth down, except for the one field goal attempt that was blocked. Please start the play clock. And Spencer, we talked about Eureka being light-handed. Their center also was hurt, and they had different guys playing center this week in practice. As Jalen Ray will flip it out inside the 20, out of bounds at about the 21 or 22 yard line. Two, That'll be Daquan, Daquan McIntosh, McIntosh on the reception. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, didn't, I haven't seen Willie Cox out there today. And he's been a good guy to have off the edge. 10, right, and you don't want to make excuses about being light-handed. I'm certainly not going to no, stand no, no, out no. here and, and do that. Eight. But injuries are a part of football, Spencer, yep. and uh, we know that. And uh, <laughs> you got to adjust. You know, it's just a next man up mentality. And in week one, we talked to Barth, and he said everybody gets reps in practice for situations like this. Right in the gun looking to throw. Airs it out in the middle of the field. Oh, and it's dropped by Maurice Williams. The late contact going on, and that is going to several penalty flags on the play. Probably going to be a flag on Hopkins. And we talk about it. How we literally talked about it earlier. It's the second guy in retaliation that is going to get the flag call. There was extracurriculars after the play was over. Hopkins was fired up. He got taken. He got. Somebody took him down late, but you can't fire back in a situation like that. It could be a situation, you know, this has been a frustrating half, and sometimes you get to let your emotions get to you in situations like this, and it can cost you, like we're probably going to see <laughs> here. The special, er, wow. Discussion being had by the officials. Out of the play, personal foul and necessary rep. Strength number 17. Personal foul on necessary roughness. Offense 79. That was offset. Third down. We'll be offsetting penalties, Spencer. So not not as bad of a situation, but still. I mean, if you don't retaliate, it's probably a penalty against the offense and they're getting backed up. Yeah. That's 15 yards the other way. And again, like Rockford likely going for it on fourth down. This is a third and eight. They've been playing to go for it all game. It's benefited Third and worked for them very well. Well, Spencer, we didn't even talk about the play. Third they had a dude <laughs> wide open in the end zone <laughs> and dropped it. Maurice Yard Williams just dropped it. Again, I don't know. Can't blame the sun on this one, but <laughs> crowd trying to make some noise. Jalen Ray, 8.06 left. Rockford up seven. Carry in motion. Ray looking to throw. Ceramic. End zone bound, and it's picked off. Jack Arnett in the end zone. Somehow, Jakelovic and McIntyre could not bring Jack it in. Somehow, Arnett Jack Arnett finds it in his basket. On the interception. Look what I found. I'm not really sure how he got that, Spencer, uh, if I'm being honest with you. Um, there were two guys that I thought were going to catch that ball for Rockford. Uh, they had two guys open in the end zone. Kind of in the same area, but Jack's the one that came up with it. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> it just kind of dropped into his hands. I can't even think like of a comparison. It's, I guess that you're like at a baseball game and two First fans are going for the ball and it's the guy sitting down that somehow catches 20. it. Like something like that, I guess. That was that found was its bizarre. way home. So Eureka now with a chance to capitalize off of a turnover. Frazier looks to air it out. Butler going deep. Butler bringing it in. We've got a first down reception. Well, you're starting to feel Number that momentum two, start to shift Jack after the interception. Butler. And uh, they wanted to capitalize on that Number right away. Three, Took a shot down the field. Jack Butler just had a little bit of separation on his man. Two, and a perfect Jack ball from Butler. Caden Frazier. And First poised by Caden Frazier after being, you know, shaken up through a couple of interceptions earlier on. Comes back with composure and delivers a perfect ball to get his team in a plus territory. 
7.35 left in the fourth quarter. And again, I just, the fact that this game turned into something this exciting was surprise. It was fun to call as a Eureka fan in the first one. Burnaby up the middle now, able to shake off a defender, trying to get up the field. It could be a four or Number five yard game. But again, it did not look like this was going to be a super competitive line. game. He after the, you know the, the halfway mark of the second quarter, no, Eureka looked really sharp in the Eureka first half. Came out a little bit lax in the second half. Made the some 40. mental errors, some physical errors, penalties, turnovers, whatever. But the defense coming up big and giving their offense an opportunity to tie this game back up. That Jack Arnett, senior leader out there, somebody that Coach Barth has really been like. This guy has been key in terms of weight room development as well as just his on-field play. Burnaby now with another carry. Burnaby up the middle. Burnaby with a first down, still it going. Still can't go down and will eventually the 25. Well, Spencer, we just called out these seniors. We called them out and we said, hey, it's time to make a play. And these two seniors right here are making plays for their team right now. And uh, kind of putting the team on their back and saying, hey, we're not going down in this one. Ben Burnaby's kind of been doing that all day. He gashed him for that, what, 50, 40-yard run? And again, didn't come out or didn't get points out of it, but Ben Burnaby certainly putting up a heck of a game. A little too much noise for Levi's liking while their team's on offense. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to make noise while your team is on offense. You <laughs> want to be able to think out there. Deloche hit near the Jacoby line, still able to fall Deloche forward. Three yard gain for Eureka. He, he took a hard hit and stayed up and yards. kept running. Like we said, a tough guy to bring down. This is getting into that zone where you got to be a little nervous because this is a, a Rockford team that can strike Second quick, but they can bleed seven. you on a, a long drive too. So Eureka has to make the most out of this opportunity. They showed that ability in the first half. They slowed that drive down a lot. It was getting close to the end of the second quarter, and they were just burning a lot of time off that clock. They do have the ability to do it. Frazier. Back in the shotgun, looking to throw. Airs it out deep, looking for Hill. Sebastian Hill, touchdown! 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 Well, like, wow, what a ball by Caden Frazier. I mean, we talked about earlier that sideline boundary being an extra defender. Didn't matter to him. Still dropped it in the bucket. And look at that, Spencer. We've got old-timer Pierce Bradford on the sideline, former Eureka receiver. Him, they would say. Steve Bartkus with a chance to Number tie things up now. Steven Bartkus getting ready to attempt the point after. And like you said, what a perfectly placed Frazier ball from Caden Frazier. And a great catch by Sebastian Hill. Pass. Opportunity to tie. It. And offsides. He's got a penalty flag is the call. on the play. Probably a good thing. I'm I think he missed that. Did he? I, I don't he know. I thought he boomed it through. Uh, uh, it's still, again, like. <laughs> the angle I, is weird, but it kind of looked like he pulled it. I would love to have a monitor that would just show, like, end to end so I can just tell if kicks are good. We don't want a Jay Feely situation where he's like, and he blasts it through, and he missed it, like, completely wide. But, again, as a broadcaster, you're standing, looking at the field horizontally and not vertically. We do the best we can up here, we, folks. We do. We do the best we can. <laughs> no spotters. We're doing it all ourselves. Offside. <laughs> Not to get carried away from this game. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is going to come down to the wire here, folks. 5.30 left in the fourth. This is a huge extra point right here. I would fake it personally. I'm getting it. <laughs> Little Dan Campbell type action right there. Oh, I know you love that. Oh, I do. I really do. Be Barkus. Try to tie things up at 28. Week three barn burner. We talked about it pre-game. We talked about it before the game. This is going to be an exciting one. Hold is down. Kick is up. Kick is the good. Kick is Tie good game at 58. Seven, Stephen Barkus. It is Eureka College. Five and a half minutes Rockford to go in regulation. And folks, uh, five and a half. It'll be a long five and a half minutes. It's going to be a long. It's going to be a long five and a half minutes. And this is where we talk about it. I believe both teams have used a timeout. Yes, yes, both teams I believe have used a timeout, but I'm not sure. I think on that play where I think Rockford might have called a timeout. I'm not sure because they didn't say who called it, but it looks like Rockford's team got to the sideline first before Eureka knew what was going on. So could potentially have been a Rockford timeout there. I'm Again, I'm not sure because we don't have it here and we weren't told anything. Yeah. 
Five and a half minutes left. But we will keep you updated on the timeout situation <laughs> as we figure it learn out. Things. <laughs> Number 87, Steven Barkus, ready to kick off from his own 35. Steven Barkus getting ready to kick it off in this tie game. We'll check to make sure his players are ready as he booms it away. And Spencer, oh, this one's going to stay in bounds. I thought it was going out. A great kick there. Bearden with a nice move, able to get to the 21. Two timeouts Number left for both teams. On the return, Timothy Got that Bearden. confirmed. That was where I was at. <laughs> so Back it was a timeout by Eureka. By four, Chris Woods. Well, and this is the moment I don't know necessarily you want Rockford as a senior. Nobody like you like being in close games. It's fun to watch, but as a player, I think you want to shell the other team and not have to really prove how tough you are. Oh yeah, you're not not really looking at the beginning of the game to be in a situation like this. And the crowd is going to start making some noise here as this is the biggest drive of the game. Again, a penalty-laden first half, turnover-laden second half. Handoff, Jack Carey. Jack Carey able to get some running Number room. Four, He's going to drag some Jack bodies with him Carey. as he makes his way down the field. Tackle by about Number five or six. I don't want to say he's an unsung guy on this offense. He's obviously the lead running back. But he does a lot for this offense. He does do a lot for this the offense. And if, with it being a pass-first offense, um, you know, the the running back can get lost in that a lot, but he's made some plays for his team today, and he's been a tough runner all game long, and he's been a tough guy to bring down. Yeah, and he's been one of the guys catching these swing passes that have been really effective. Ray fires a bubble screen out to McIntosh. McIntosh looking to get to the sideline, and he is brought down, down with, like, Johnson with the guy there. Reception for the Regents. It was number two, Daquan McIntosh. So a first down for Rockford, and again, Levi, this is where we talked about Rockford's ability to bleed clock. Yeah, we saw it at the begin. At, the excuse me, at the end the of the first half. Now we're seeing it here at the uh, coming down in the clock, winding down in this fourth quarter. They're gonna try to burn some. They don't want Eureka to have a chance to potentially score if they were to put points on the board here. Eureka's defense looking to do exactly the opposite of that. There's a quick throw there. McIntosh once again looks like a six-yard gain. On the play for and Spencer, they're back to that. Screen Number pass, two, swing pass, their way down the field. Touch. Short little dink and dunk plays. Tackle on the play by yeah, I'd like to see if uh, a guy like Christian Miller or Donnie Hathaway pop four, out on that edge on a little quicker than Rockford game. thought. Maybe get their hands on a football. Under four minutes left, second and four. Ball in the 47 for Rockford. Wind starting to pick up just a slight bit. Hopkins with a good push there. Hopkins getting to the quarterback and brought down. Quarterback sack. Well, like I said, Austin Hopkins, a guy Number whose name 17. we call all the time, makes a big play there, getting in the backfield. Austin Hopkins. Is that our first sack the on the day, Spencer? Is that the first time we've sacked him? We got, we got him down and earlier. Hill and uh, Miller sack. combined oh, correct, for one. Correct, correct. Correct. It will be third but still, we haven't brought him down too many times today, but it felt like it feels like we're putting pressure on him every play. Yard line. And now third and Spencer 13. third and 13. Need this crowd to get into it. Now we need the noise. <laughs> now we need the noise. Ray in the backfield. Here's a snap going back. Miller looking to provide some pressure. Steps through. Ray looking to run. Brendan Durr trying to chase him down. Ray's still going. He's got a first down. We've got a first and Jalen Ray using his legs. Well, Spencer, we've talked about our Number seniors one, making plays Jaylen and our Ray veteran guys making plays, but that's a veteran guy Curry. for them making a veteran play right there. That's a gutsy run for a first down. The ball is placed on the midfield stripe. First and 10, Rockford. High ball game at 28. Folks, if you're just tuning in, you've missed a barn burner. Ray handing off carry up the middle. Looks to get taken down there by Wayne and Arnett. Jack Perry is down to about the yeah, six yard gain. Yard line. He's getting he's getting good chunks on every carry that he's getting here in the late stages of this game. And Spencer, 
The clock the is just ticking and ticking and ticking. There are now timeout, two minutes and 14 Collins. seconds. Eureka will take a timeout. We'll take a timeout as well. Tie game, 28-28, 2.14 to go in this fourth quarter. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Eureka, Illinois. We've got a tie ball game here in the fourth quarter, 28-28 with 2.14 left. I'm Spencer Davis. Levi Taylor is my partner in crime today. It's been a real fun one. Oh, well, <laughs> I don't know if fun's the word for it. It's been an exciting game. Eureka has really shot themselves in the foot here in the second half, blew the lead that they had. But that none of that matters right now. The only thing that matters is getting out of this football game with a win. Jalen Ray fifth year quarterback for Rockford really been putting the team on his back a huge run for him early on in this drive somebody still has the ball it was Ray that did well we got pressure back there but Ray again one, a good runner Jalen Ray and that was not something like deeper. he came into this game again with seven attempts on the year Tackle for 20 yards uh, he's he got, just busted a 16 yarder he's got way more than that today it will be third, third and, and two. Third and two, two. for Rockford. On the and I would say, Levi, do you – Obviously, you got to get a stop here. Do you go for it on fourth if you get it if you're Rockford? I don't know. They love going for it on fourth down. Yeah, they do. They like to win. This is a tough spot, but we know that they like to make those gutsy calls in primetime. Ray is going to go to the edge it and overthrew his man. Pass. So this is where decision time comes in. There's a minute and 24 two seconds Rockford. left. Rockford is no stranger to making bold play calls, to say the least. They went for two when they were down one in their last the game to win. Still being placed on the and it looks like the offense is going to stay out there. This is a big play. We need the fans now Rockford. to get really loud. This is the biggest play of the game right here. Eureka needs to make a stand right here. These seniors, I'm sure, are trying to talk their guys up, trying to stay calm in a situation like this. I'd keep an eye out for a QB keeper from Ray. They're going to throw it instead, looking to go to the edge. McIntosh is there, and it's broken up. No flags on the play, and Eureka's got a chance to win this one. Hanson Johnson, the freshman, making a great play there. No flags. Just there was a little contact, but I don't think it was enough. I think there was a good no call there. And now, good field position for this offense. A minute 21. A chance to go down and win this game for this Eureka offense. This is what you want in front of your home fans. Minute 21. The Red Devils will take over first and 10. They get the ball at it. Prime real estate, 42 yard, yard line. line. First and 10, Eureka College. A minute and a half remaining in the game. Now contest. Eureka's sideline telling everyone to quiet down, quiet down. We know you're excited, but please don't yell right now. Library yeah, this voices. Is when, this is when we needed to be quiet. Library voices in effect on the sideline. Frazier back to pass. Burnaby with picking up a big block. And Butler's wide open. Butler to the 20. Butler to the 10. He's trying to shake and bake. And he's brought Shot down inside the 10-yard line. The reception. And they need to slow Just it bleed down the here. clock. Bleed that clock. You're inside the 10-yard line. No need to hurry up here. Let that clock run. Frazier doing the, the signature slow down motion. For the Red Devils. Again, Rockford and has one timeout. The they have blocked a kick for a 97-yard return. So this contest. game is far from over, despite being a, under a minute to go. Well, that play clock ticking under 10, 9, 8. 
Yeah, Frazier's got to go. A penalty would stop the clock. Going to hand off Burnaby. Burnaby up the middle of the field looking for his third touchdown. He's, I don't know if he was really looking to score on that as much as he was just get the clock going. First, the last time out taken by Rockford. 41 on seconds. Wow, what ben a game Burnaby. this has turned into, Spencer. I can't believe <laughs> that we are in this situation right now. But nevertheless, here we are in an exciting one. <laughs> Roller coaster is the only way to describe this one. They've kept us on our toes this second half, Spencer, for sure. On the three-yard line of Rockford. So it's a second and goal from this three-yard line. Eureka set up on the hash. Looks like number 67, Bryson Cast, is going to come out on this play as a backup right tackle, but he's putting on number 85 for this play. Could be something to keep an eye on as an eligible receiver type thing, type situation. Yeah, I'm looking to bring out the jumbo package, perhaps. They've got their up back, Gabe Townsend in, and they've got the man himself, Ben Burnaby, lined up. Frazier's going to take this snap under center clock. Stopped at 43 after the timeout. Look how low Frazier is to get this snap. He's going to twist around. Burnaby to the crib! Touchdown! 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 Wow. What a drive by the offense right there. Great stand by the defense to get the turnover on downs on fourth down. And the offense just took control with a big play to Jack Butler to get him inside the 10-yard line. But there is still quite a bit of time left on the clock with 41 seconds and a team that is used to being uh, behind as they did last week, they came back late and was able the to score. So again, this game far from over. Yeah, I feel like Steven I know something Barth that nobody else really knows in the stands. I know that Coach Barth knows. Coach Barth obviously Devils. excited, but he's going to have a quick conversation with Steve Barkis, his, his kicker on this. But yeah, th again, this is a very dangerous Rockford team still. Wow. How much fun is this, huh? It was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, this one really gets uh, gets on gets the heart race and gets on your nerves. And uh, you know, especially when you're seeing your team make mistakes like that and letting a team put points up on them that shouldn't be. You know. Yeah, I mean, th again, this is a good Rockford offense, but that first half proved that Eureka's defense had the answers. It was just somebody kind of snatched the answer key from them. And <laughs> all right, let's try it. Let's try your luck now see what happens. Ben Burnaby with three rushing touchdowns today. He's been a demon in the backfield. We've got 41 seconds left. Steve Barkus to kick. Matt Centeni is going to be holding the kick here. That's my good buddy right there. A little too breezy to let it stand on its own, it appears. Maybe they couldn't find the tee. That might be another thing. I don't know. This could be a strategy thing. He's going to send this one towards the end zone, and it's going to be brought out. He thought about oh, taking he hesitated. the That might have burned some time. Misses the tackle there. He's wrapped up. Oh, and a hard Number shot. Matt Centeni with a big Burn shot the on the play. The guy that was holding Burn. the kick, but we've got a flag. Not sure what it's going to be. It might have been a face mask on one of the initial tackles, but Matt Centeni the laid the boom Number on that boy. 59. Matthew Sentney, Matthew Sentney, the freshman out of Kiwani Weathersfield on this the is a big, tackle. This is a big call Number here. Because if it Matthew is a face mask, Sentney. that's going to move the ball up to the 18. And that's the only thing I could think of. I did see his head kind of turn. During the return, personal foul, face mask, kicking team. Face. Sometimes it doesn't feel good to be right, but that well, unfortunately you were right. Yeah. Face mask. The ball is on the 20. It's gonna take away a great play by 
The coverage Lockford, team. First and ten. I mean, Matt Centeni still gets the tackle on that. He does. And he gets to add that to the highlight reel regardless. He got hit hard. 34 seconds left. Rockford, again, a very dangerous team. This game is not over. Jalen Ray looking to demonstrate his poise. Get a fire to the sideline. Bearden looking to get some room and able to do so and gets out of bounds. We've got a reception Expect a lot play. of routes run to that sideline. Yeah, with a, in a situation like Number this with the time running down and limited timeouts, you're going to be trying to get it to the out-of-bounds line and stop the clock. On the 35-yard line, first and 10, Rockford. All up to the 35. Seconds. Clock stopped after the route made it out of bounds. Jalen Ray. Three safeties deep for Eureka. Quick pass. Looking to get outside. We've and got out of bounds. Spencer, I thought his knee was down when he caught that football, but I guess Number I was wrong. Three. That would have put him down reception. inbounds. The clock would have been running. I'm out, Eureka. Second charge, timeout. Uh, wouldn't have mattered either way because we took a timeout. From I don't think we would have taken the timeout if timeout, he had went down in bounds. I can't imagine. Second and 25 the seconds left. Levi. On the yard line touchdown the keeps this game alive. Obviously, you have to convert the extra point, but. I don't think Rockford's going to kick the extra point if there's a chance. I don't think they're going to kick the extra point either. We saw them do almost the identical thing last week. Almost the same score. Almost the same score. Almost the exact same score. It's eerily similar. <laughs> eerily similar. And, uh, you know, we're trying not to let it get to that point. We're going to try to stop them before they get there. But if they there were to, I would not be surprised to see a two-point conversion being attempted. On the clock. I believe it was a very long touchdown in that Rockford College of St. Scholastica game that Rockford won last week line. that got them that late touchdown and then subsequent two-point conversion to win. It was a 64-yard touchdown to William Key, I believe, is what it was. Eureka dropping four safeties. <laughs> Running a 3-5. Arnett will step up into coverage, more like three, and three deep now, right? Plenty of time on the play clock. Fires quickly to the middle of the field, and there's a lot of running room. Cutting up the middle of the field. He's at the 35 and a spin at the 30. We got a completed pass for a first down. And the clock, Blake Winters. Number Is that 18 seconds here, the Spencer? They get Blake up to the line Winters. quick. And we'll have a timeout. Eureka. Timeout, Eureka. With 15 College. seconds to go. With 15 here in the fourth quarter, the Spencer. Clock. I'm what do you think is the thought it's behind that timeout there? With the clock running, Start with you play. being up seven. Maybe uh, just make sure you get your defensive there scheme in, maybe get some subs in. Uh, okay, they were playing hurry up, so you couldn't First get as many subs in Rockford and out. On the 30 yard line of Eureka. Yeah, this is uh, 30. Oh, this is. They put three seconds back on the clock. There are 18 seconds. Yeah, Jalen Ray is. Certainly within, this is easy money for his arm in terms of places he can reach. And I would say most of their playbook is open. you got to keep an eye, like, I mean, on this play, who are you, who are you watching? They've got time for maybe, I mean, it depends on how quickly they last and if they go down in bounds. But Well, Daquan McIntosh has been a guy that's been gashing us all game long. And he's, he's an issue at receiver. Could be a guy that they go back to here. Got to line up in the slot. Looks like. Four wide receivers carry in the backfield. Carry. And it looks like somebody twitched a false start. Could be the crowd noise being a factor there. Crowd noise, adrenaline. Credit that one to the crowd. We'll give that one to the crowd. Oh, yeah, I'll give it to them. It will be first and 15. 35-yard line the now. But again, Spencer, this is where you wish that 10-second runoff existed. <laughs> yeah. Penalties, a factor for both teams here. Yeah. There's been a lot of them this game. But it's do or die time for this Eureka defense. No better time to show up than right now. Ray. Dropping back, fires middle of the field, brought in by Maurice Williams. They're going to have to get up to the line quick. Clock ticking at, or excuse me, stops as they move the chains. The 
I guess that now they will set the clock in motion. 10 seconds, Ray. Possibly the final play to the corner. Oh my in goodness, McIntosh off of his hands. Three, three seconds, seconds left. Remaining. That was a good ball by Jalen Ray. I thought he had him, but fortunately off the fingertips, incomplete. Yeah, that was a perfect ball. The play the before ball fired a strike. That was a great ball over the middle. But here we go, Spencer. Three, three seconds, seconds left. left on the clock. This is the ball game, folks. At least for the time being. <laughs> we might have another play coming up. Hopefully not. Okay, Eureka fans. Jalen Ray. You one big play. Fifth year trying to get his guys to two and one. Eureka looking to hold on to go three and oh. Five receivers out wide, and this is again, you can't let Ray just have a free run if he wants it. Ray drops back, heat coming. Durr fires into the middle of the field. Beard and shakes his man. He loses the ball and he's down. And that is the ball game. Eureka survives. Eureka College, well, 35. All I got to say, Spencer, is it was not pretty. It was not probably the way that they wanted it to go. But a win is a win at the end of the day. Eureka improves to 3-0. and 1-0 in conference now with another conference matchup going into next week against St. Norbert. Plenty of things that we could talk about in this one. Plenty of things that we could point at in this one. But at the end of the day, 35-28, the final student section ready to go. And man, that's, wow, what a game. What a game. 21 point lead at one point for Eureka. Give up 28 unanswered points. And then punch right back in the championship rounds, if we call. Ben Burnaby finishes with three rushing touchdowns. Caden Frazier with two passing touchdowns. And defense, the defense came through. Yeah, we talked about a lot about our seniors stepping up. And we saw a lot of guys step up and make plays here late in this game that was able to give us the victory. But Spencer, <laughs> we got to clean up some things for next week if we want to keep this win streak going. Yeah, best start to a season since 2018. 3-0, and and they'll look to continue their success next week here at home against St. Norbert. I believe that game kicks off at 1 o'clock once again. Looking forward to bringing it to you. But for now, Spencer Davis, Levi Taylor, thank you for joining us. Thank you to our crew. We will see you next week.